forward pocket. Uh, but as you say, Doug, probably will come on and off the bench. And here come the Demons. They've been let out by David Neitz because Glenn Lovett isn't there. By their brilliant captain, Wayne Kerry. Even though he was down a bit last week, the Kangaroos were just too good as well for the West Coast Eagles last week. They won a great game last night against Collingwood. There we go then, and already an infringement in the centre, and it's going to be Melbourne through Hopgood, who go down towards the half-forward line. Carey won the toss. North Melbourne are kicking left. The Demons in early trouble. That was James McDonald feeling the tackle and feeling the pressure. The ball is finally taken over the line. One of the great defenders, David King, loves to run out of defence. Been a marvellous player for the North Melbourne Football Club, second in their best and fairest last year. And we know that Anthony McDonald was a late uh, withdrawal from the side. He was replaced by Donald Cockatoo Collins. Mickey Martin was hoping for a favourable bounce. Didn't come his way. Sean Smith's playing his 100th game. Beaten by Glenn Archer, who pushes it back towards the half-back flank and the boundary line. So another throw-in. Sandy, just weird. a quick uh, update on Matthew Capuano, who hurt himself throughout the week of training. That's why he's not playing today. And uh, uh, we look forward to seeing him back in the uh, next couple of weeks. And uh, as we expected, Jared Ingerson is picking up Kerry. And Shanahan is going to run with uh, Craig Scholl. Well, Scholl's pretty good at ground level, Doug. Do you think uh, there is a bit of a problem there for Melbourne? Big problem. I'd like to see Seacamp play on Scholl. In towards full forward once again. Jeff White was there, unable to take the mark. Mickey Martin defends. Comes back towards centre half back with a tumbling punt kick. Who's going to be first to it? Pushed off the ground by Melbourne's David Schwartz towards the line. Just up towards centre wing, and we've got another throw in. There he is, one of the key men for the Demons. Great to see him back after so many knee problems. A couple of hard men, aren't they? Archer and yeah. David Schwartz. And they'll be going uh, flat chat and in straight lines at the footy. Gentlemen, Jim Steins up against Martin Pike. Pike has been in excellent form. And he'll be hoping that continues. McDonald again towards the boundary line. Gains probably 15 metres. And it's to Anthony Stevens. Interested uh, in a comment from you, Peter McKenna, uh, down on the forward line. Jeff White on Jason McCartney. Yes, that's a very interesting move. You'd think White would start in the centre bounce, and, but he, with his leaping, it'll trouble McCartney, although he's been in good form, Jared. Hop good off the ground. Doesn't gather a lot of distance. The farmer is in trouble. A bit of magic from young Jeffrey, but he lost it. The D's still in with a chance for possession. Up towards full forward once again. Now White's at the back. Obtains front spot. Well done by Jeff White. Strong mark. And he'll have a shot just 20 metres out almost directly in front. Well, Peter McKenna did uh, say that the leap was going to be a problem. Not just for Jason McGarden. He probably for every player that uh, this young superstar plays on. Probably going a bit hard calling him a superstar this early in his career, Doug, but he's got the potential. He certainly has, Jared, no doubt about that. As he comes and have a shot, he's shot for goal right now. 20 metres out. First score will go on the board. It goes to the Demons, but he's slammed it into the woodwork. Disappointing miss. Unfor unforgivable, really, although having said that, we've all done it. Every football that's played the game has missed some goals from 5 to 10 yards out, metres out now. But uh, they're the ones that you like to get on the board early to generate some confidence. David King, long, low and accurate to Archer. Two of the keys to this North Melbourne defence. His kick has to be accurate. And it was towards Brady Anderson. Anderson goes up over the centre. North have yet to go up towards half forward. And Melbourne at the moment standing strong. Stein takes the hand pass, kicks down towards Farmer. Jeffrey Farmer's away. 55 metres out yeah. and closing in towards goal. That's better. And this time, White doesn't let him down. I, I, I tell you what there, Jared. I, I've got to see a move made there. I think McCarthy, Jason McCarthy, better suited to David Swartz. And maybe even the Glenn Archer, who's very hard, very tough, and very much more experienced than, than McCartney, maybe to play on Jeff White, because McCartney was dead set lost. He was probably 20 metres away from his opponent on that occasion. Well, it was a good turnover by Melbourne as we have a look uh, across the half-back line. Dangerous area and smart work there by Jeff Farmer. But, of course, one of the problems North have got, Doug, is that they're undermanned through injuries. Good start by Melbourne. One goal, one. North yet to score as we go back into the centre. Steins. They're winning it out of the middle of the Demons at the moment. North having their problems down in defence. 
is uh, Abraham getting the hand pass away. The Roos yet to go past half forward. They've got the opportunity through Shannon Grant this time. Up towards the 50 goes his kick. Pressure on the D's defence. Seacamp's in trouble. So too was Carl. He lost it. Had it for a moment. Back towards Seacamp again. Strong tackle. Sees him lose it. Fierce tackling. Good start by Melbourne. Here's Shanahan getting it off to Paul Hopgood. And Hopgood's away for the D's. Into the wide open spaces. Sean Hangtime Smith is giving chase. Needs support. Wants it through Uze. Brady Anderson wants it more. Goes to ground and is going to get a free kick. In fact, it's going to go to Anderson on the halfback. And it's pretty clear that Dennis Pagan has told Craig Scholl to run Jamie Shanahan as far up the ground as possible. They've actually got Scott Welsh playing at full forward at the present time. And Shanahan is going to play a lot of, great, a lot of this game in the middle of the ground. Uze again hugging the boundary line, taken over by Anderson, a throw in on the outer side. With Capuano out of the side, and of course McKernan not playing, uh, Dennis Pagan has been forced to play second gamer Evan Hewitt in the ruck. So it's a big assignment for the young fella, particularly against Jeff uh, White and uh, Jimmy Steins. Huge reps on him though, Dougie, aren't they? Big reps for the young fella, uh, Hewitt. And Shanahan has now gone on to Mellington, who's just been given a run. Schwartz up towards Neitz, looks for the free kick, doesn't come his way. Oh, here's Palmer again! Another one to the knees! So White's got one, Palmer's got one, and Melbourne have opened up a smart 13-point lead. I think there, Jared, you may have seen that little flick across there from Neitz was very, 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 very clever player. You see Schwartz go long into their forward line. Well, no, it was in the back, well, probably in the back... Matter of fact, it was Jeff White who touched that ball, flicked it over across the farm. It wasn't uh, Neitz, I thought it was, but maybe in the back there, Jared Hilly. Yes, oh. Doug, I think you're onto it. But good combination from the youngsters. What a start by Melbourne and Jeff Farmer. 13 points the margin. North yet to go deep into attack. It's all Melbourne at the moment as they go down towards half forward once again. And the mark is going to be paid this time. John Blake is going to take it at halfback. Along to David King. One thing we've learned about North Melbourne, though, they hang on and they come back. Anderson gives it away to Stevens. Stevens tumbles a punt kick up towards centre wing. Uze tried to do it with the one hand. Phoebe gives him good support across to Hopgood. Hopgood looks down towards the 50. Neats was he shoved again. He's trying desperately hard for that piece oh, here of leather. Goes again. Here goes Farmer. Jeffrey making another one. Which way will it bounce? Oh, North are feeling the pressure strongly at the moment. McCartney comes back. He wanted Shannon Grant, doesn't find him. Instead, it goes to Guy Ragoni. 65 metres out is Ragoni. Oh, sensational grab by David Schwartz. Started two back, got front spot, and Melbourne looking very, very strong up forward early on. Well, David King uh, playing on Jeff Farmer right at this stage. Looks as if he's being lost uh, with Farmer going up the ground and then charging back. He's such an electrifying player. But Melbourne are winning all the loose balls. No doubt there, Jared. David Schwartz. Goals for Melbourne. What a start. Well, Doug, if you're Dennis Pagan, you'd be a little bit concerned here because Melbourne know that uh, they've had a victory over North Melbourne in recent times, albeit a, a big upset in round one last year, but they've started brilliantly. They certainly have, uh, Jared, and no doubt North Melbourne's midfield are very, very slow to get off the mark here. Stevens probably hasn't touched the football yet. Anthony Rock's had no say in the game whatsoever, and Peter Bell's been very, very quiet as well. Well, it's now up to North Melbourne to get something into their forward line. Well, the boys from Arden Street are giving, have been given a 19-point start. They've got to come back early on. Steins again. Melbourne have been winning consistently out of the middle. Cal can't take it this time. It's Grant who gives it to Stevens. This is better for North Melbourne. An attempted soccer off the ground, and the snap is going to be wide away to the left. No score as yet. And a throw in in the left forward pocket. By the way, just touching on Stevens and Ballon Rock. Stevens had one kick, Ballon Rock yet to touch the footy. So, Dougie, you're pretty close to the mark there. <laughs> Thank you, Douglas. <laughs> Steins from behind. Jamie Shanahan gets the hand pass away. Here's Gurgi on the outer side. Poor kick could prove costly as North go deep into their forward line once again. Shanahan is at the back with a fist. Together, he spoils with Ingerson and a throw in. 
Well, quite unbelievable that Wayne Carey has already been pushed to centre half back to pick up David Swartz. And Gary Lyon would be thrilled at the start uh, of the club that he has captained the past seven years, although not doing the pushing the back to Steins, Jared. Advantage call. And uh, Ingerson takes advantage too as he kicks back towards the centre. Now there's three Melbourne players there. Seacamp had uh, North Melbourne players. Seacamp had to beat them. He couldn't, but he's got good support. It's socket off the ground. Down towards the forward line once again. Mickey Martin's going to feel the heat. David Neitz is too quick for him. Neitz thought that he needed assistance. He did it on his own and he dribbled it in towards goal just off target. Johnny Blakey down looks hurt. Well, well interesting the tactics they're using with uh, David Swartz. They're actually using him to lure Wayne Carey away from the play. And we saw Carey just coming up on screen earlier when that ball crossed the line and a big hip and shoulder there that didn't come off. But Peter McKenna, you've uh, made an observation from the Southern stand. Well, they cost themselves a goal there, Jerry. That should have been a hand pass from Leach to Farmer running into an open goal. They cost themselves six points. Well, North can't afford any more at the moment. Scholl has it in the middle of the ground. Needs support and gets it inside 50. Could almost have been down the ground, but play goes on. Slapped by Welch towards the line, kept in play by Rock. They're desperate for a score here, but good work by Steins on the last line of defence. Powell takes it over, and there'll be another throw in. And With Anthony Rock's just been taken from the ground. His tag of Paul Hopkins had seven kicks already in this game, so there Rock's off the ground. And he's had a great start to the year, Paul Hopkins. Uh, he's got a number of big scalps already this season, including, including Rowan Smith of the Western Bulldogs. And he picked up Harvey there for a while and did quite well also. Good tagger, Jared. Excellent. As we see on the screen, Chris Gruber has just come onto the ground and now playing the ruck against Jimmy Steins. Men in charge today, Brent Allen, Steve Hanley and Troy Burton. North Melbourne won't be worrying about that at the moment as Phoebe clears for the Demons, going back towards the half-back flank. Trying to take it over the top was Andrew Lee and Shelley. Payne drifted in towards Carl in the middle. He's got to beat a couple. Can't do so. Pressure on, but he gets the hand pass away. Back to McDonald. They combine to go up towards half four. David King is in the way, and he marks for North Melbourne. King's hand pass, a little loose, but it bounces okay for Wayne Carey. Carey comes across the ground to half-back, Shannon Grant. Grant will swing onto the left foot, looking down towards centre wing and half forward, and a diving fingertip mark is taken there by Evan Hewitt. Big reps on this young man, off towards Archer, away towards Pike. Pike looks down towards the forward line, a little too far at the moment, so hoping to clean up will be Gergic for Melbourne. Quite happy to see it over the line. And Dennis Pagans moved Kerry from centre half forward to centre half back to pick up Swartz, and Archer now has gone to centre half forward to Kangaroos. Don't forget, if you want to check on uh, the website, the AFL website, just dial up www.afl.com.au. As Seacan, under pressure, loses it. Can it be kept in play by Hopgood? He's playing well as Paul Hopgood gets the hand pass away. A little too slow, however, opens the door for Martin Pike. Pike sets sail to Hover North Melbourne, but he's off target. And it is a one behind. Now, John, did he get rid of that ball legitimately? Wasn't no, he didn't. I mean, it's prior opportunity to dispose of the footy tackled. The ball fell from the tackle. Here we see it here. He certainly didn't handball the ball. When he's had an opportunity to dispose of the ball and is tackled, then he must dispose by kicking or handball. 19 points the margin. Oh, Blakey wanted it. He's not going to get it. But Melbourne aren't out of trouble yet. That was Ragoni. He spilled the mark. They've got a chance to make amends. Look at this. A little bit of magic, if you don't mind, from a farmer. Away he goes to Wodern. He in turn gets it back. Down they come to Jeffrey Farmer. How good this game of footy, says Farmer. I'm loving it. Up towards right half forward and pushed over the line by Archer as he grimly defends against David Schwartz. Sandy, the, the thing we probably should make clear about those instances that should give rise to a holding the ball decision is that attempting to kick or handball is not enough. How good's this? Well, he reminds me of a bloke that played with the Western Bulldogs with number seven on his back. Doug, you were an absolute lair on that <laughs> wing occasionally, and uh, Jeff Farmer's taken over your spot. Jared, the word was mug lair. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard other versions. Uh, I think you're being a bit harsh. Now he's having a go at the king. 50 metre penalty paid Sandy. That's why he wasn't allowing David King to continue. So Wilson Pickett 
will come down towards left half forward. And uh, Neil Danaher. Still looking for his first win in the home and away series. His side has given him a pretty exciting start in this first quarter. Byron Pickett. Just forward of the centre. Penetrating kick up towards the forward line. They need a mark. They don't get it. Shanahan was at the bottom. Tried to farm it out. Did pretty well, in fact. Now the opportunity for Melbourne through Ragoni again. Ragoni's kick comes back towards the centre. Still dribbling away. Carey charges at it. He gets taken out. He was shoved Pushing in the back. The back. Now, even though Carey was off the ball there, he was clearly pushed in the back, so no doubt that... He's 50. Uh, now, here's a 50, I think. He's, got a, he's a bit excited. Well, it's interesting. I mean, he's given the benefit of the doubt to Jeff Farmer, yet Farmer clearly ran at Carey, and play on hadn't been called. So uh, some would say that common sense should prevail and draw the line, but if Farmer runs at a player who hasn't played on, it's a 50-metre penalty. Doug, your thoughts on Wayne Carey playing in defence early in this game? Well, they're very desperate uh, Jared, at the moment, Dennis Pagan and North Melbourne. He's the man who would always call upon to stand up and be counted. He's got to do the job again today at the moment. Ingerson taken. Uh, I think it was Ingerson. It was Shane Way Woden taken high, and he's got the free kick. And he's got the job on Shannon Grant. Grant's got six possessions already, so he needs to tighten up. But I'm not sure there was any doubt about that one, John. No, not at all. High tackle was paid clearly high. Adam Uze in picture. Perfect day, really. Fine day in Melbourne, just a light breeze and a temperature in the very low 20s. Well, there's about three ruckmen on the field, and yet we've got centre half back and centre half forward contesting the ruck work. Uh, that's football of the modern day. Funny old game, isn't it, though? <laughs> well, here's a chance now for Melbourne. Although North through Stevens will defend from a fullback, drifts it to Peter Bell at half back. He in turn gets it away to Shannon Grant. North look to go up towards right half forward. Blakey couldn't take the mark, but he's got the hand pass back again. Blakey pulls it round the body. A high kick inside 50. Shanahan's got to sit and wait. It was a little too slippery for him. He goes again, and then he puts it straight over the line. And paid for deliberate out of bounds, Sandy. Wasn't very subtle. Well, Jared Healy, that's the mark you've got to take. I don't care how that one went. They're the ones you've got to catch. Yes, the, the ghost of Darren Jarman may have been re-entering his mind uh, with uh, coming back to the end of the MCG. Interesting there. You could easily have argued that Shanahan was attempting to handball to, uh, to Hopgood in that case, but uh, Brett Allen had no doubt. Well, Scott Welsh is on screen. He'll be looking to goal, and I reckon Peter McKenna will be sitting right behind him. And, Pete, you might be able to just guide us through this one. Yes, come on, Pete. Uh, I can see this one, Jared, perfectly. Just talking about those drop marks, they are looking directly into the sun down that end, and I'm certainly Blakey dropped his because of the sun, so you can forgive them. It is very, very bright coming from the punt right end. Now, this is uh, young Scott Walsh kicking from 30 metres. Nice, easy approach, nice and relaxed, but out to the right he ran and kept it out there. Jeez, the sun must have moved nine <laughs> degrees at the MCG. Apparently this time of the day it moves very, very quickly. Oh, Daylight guys. saving, they swap it around a bit. <laughs> Does Pete think, uh, get the feeling we perhaps don't agree with him? <laughs> One of the great forecasters, Pete McKenna. <laughs> 18 points, though, the margin, more importantly, as Phoebe brings the ball back into play. Hits towards uh, the outer side. Uze and Ingerson both there. Uze goes again. Brady Anderson is with him. Uh, He's got to beat three of them, and Scholl and are making sure that he's going nowhere. Interesting, the use of Wayne Carey. It's almost as if Dennis Pagan thought that Melbourne were potentially going to go on and kick six or seven goals in a massive role in this opening term. So I think he's just decided just to hold sway, push his uh, very good players into the defensive area, just get the game back to square one right the system a little bit and then uh, we'll think I think we'll see Wayne Carey push back into the uh, forward zone in the second term well the D's obviously not suffering from the trip across the Nullarbor in that extreme heat Dougie they've come out absolutely fired up here Sandy and uh, their midfield's been brilliant Jimmy Stein's given every opportunity in the ruck and uh, he's dominating the ruck and the other thing too Jared I think uh, David King who was a free running type half back if you pick up a player like Farmer, I'm not sure if that's the way to go. Maybe a player like Pickett, who would play a little bit tighter on Farmer, because he's a very dangerous player up forward. And leave King uh, to more offensive. Work. Yeah, so he can just run forward on a younger player. Here's Bell. Gets the hand pass away. Groom kicks it high. But they're inside 50. Shanahan, good safe hands this time. Sun's and that moved. Sun's obviously moved again, Pete. Back towards the halfback flank. And the mark taken by Shane Wo. Whoop, 
He goes on with it down towards centre wing, Marcus Seacamp. So the D's making a flying start. North trying to stem the tide now. Oh. Bang! Archer almost collides. Trouble here for North Melbourne. One still down. Big pack flying. No one able to take it. Carey has ripped off the ball and it stays right there with him. Well, let's hope we can get another replay of that incident with Glenn Archer. You could see in the eyes of Wayne Carey and Jason McCartney, they knew that uh, Glenn Archer was going to keep coming back. They know that he is one of the gutsiest players ever to have played this game. And uh, when Glenn Archer's got his eyes on the ball, look out. So inside 50 for Melbourne once again. It's dangerous for North. Carey defends. Wobbles a punt kick up towards the centre of the ground, but only as far as Anthony Ingerson. Gone. Caught from behind. Try of gone from uh, the great Jared Healy. Well, Craig Schultz currently playing at centre half forward, and this may well be the plan of uh, Dennis Pagan to get him up the ground to expose to expose his opponent, uh, Jamie Shanahan, for pace. Here's Blakey. Inside 50, he fires, but he's away to the right. Another behind. Crowd making a lot of noise. Now, even though the crowd aren't happy with this sort of uh, free kick being paid, Scholl was actually behind him, but the umpire had already called play on. Now, if the player hasn't got the awareness not to play on when there's somebody behind him, it's his bad luck. He has to be aware of where the, the opposing players are around him, regardless of whether they're behind him. 17 points the margin. Phoebe again to bring it back into play. Gets the call to get on with it. And does so. The big Jim. Flicks it round the corner. Here goes Melbourne again. The hand pass to Uze is OK. It came from James McDonald. Inside 50. Fine mark in front of the eyes by Jeffrey White. Doug, they took that ball away from that kick and brilliantly penetrated the zone defence and uh, got it up to Jeff uh, White very quickly. Yeah, it was a good kick by Steins around the corner to the player on his own. I'm not quite sure which Melbourne player it was, but uh, Uze had all the time. He could have run another 10, 15 metres, Uze. The young McDonald was got the ball across to Uze and uh, good play by him. But Jeff White's too quick for McCarthy at the minute. Uh, his kick is not a memorable one, but the mark is David Neitz, who kicked 30 goals last year and was the club's leading goal kicker, has a chance to put his first on the board today. I don't know what you do here, Jared. Do you do you take a Wayne Kerry and maybe maybe play him in the ruck or play him on the board as a, maybe as a, a running ruck rover? I'm not quite sure what they're going to do there, but. Gee whiz, they're in a real problem, the Kangaroos. Down by 17 points at the moment. Neats shoots for goal. They're now down by 23. So David Neats gets his first. North are in a spot of early bother. I just reckon, too, there, Jared, I'm looking around the North Melbourne uh, set up in their defence. Maybe a guy like Archer may need to go forward because at this moment, it doesn't appear, be, appear to be a, a good marking option down there. You look down there, they've got, they've got Pike, they've got uh, Freeborn down there. Scholes, as you said, has been moved out to centre-half forward, but he's not really that marking type player down the centre-half forward. They've got some problems, problems in their forward line as well. Yeah, a lot of marking options for Melbourne at the present time, but uh, Jeff White's taking... I'm out in front at the moment, and that's purely and simply because not enough pressure being placed on the Melbourne midfield, uh, bringing the ball through. Steins wins it to Leon Celli, but the mark is taken by Pickett. Comes across the ground, and finds Wayne Carey on half-back. He's been called to play on, so he gets around Jeff White. Kicks to half forward. That sun is causing a problem up there. You can see the players shielding their eyes. Blakey's calling for it in front of the pack. Been a marvellous player, John Blakey. He might hit for home here. 55 out. They need something to give them a lift. That's a big punt. And North are on the board, finally. Through John Blakey. Well, he's one player, usually not the man to kick those long goals, but certainly on that occasion, John Blakey was the man. He's not the man that normally takes those good marks in front of packs like that too. And he certainly did that, but gee, North Melbourne certainly are struggling in their midfield, I think, at this stage. Yes, Melbourne uh, are doing particularly well in that area, but uh, with Wayne Carey across half back, the ball is struggling to get through.
So the boys from Arden Street on the board through John Blakey. Steins just waits and then wins it pointlessly. He looks to take it further down towards half forward. Farmer's hand pass. Is it going to be okay? If it sits, it certainly will be. Around the body goes Woe Woden. Heads inside 50. Needs a mark. It's got one. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. Hang time. Sean Smith. Oh, great mark by Sean Smith on that occasion. But just the, the way he pushed uh, Archer out of the uh, contest was just amazing. Take Derek. us through this, Doug. There's the mark here, and uh, great body work here. And, uh, well, Glenn Archer wasn't very happy about that, and he kicked the ground in disgust. So uh, he must have been absolutely shattered with that performance by himself there, Archer. Sean Smith for the quick reply. 45-degree angle. Oh, and he split them. Melbourne have the answers at the moment. Sean Smith in his 100th game gets his first for the day. 5-2 plays 1-3. Quite a spectacular piece of play by Sean Smith. We know he's got a great leap. He started on John Blakey, which was an interesting matchup. As we saw, Blakey got injured, and uh, he's gone down and kicked a goal himself. And this is where Sean Smith is at his most dangerous. One out with a run at the footy, and he's just got a leap that uh, no man can stop. Thirty-two plays nine. Late in the first term, Stein's got his hand to it again. He was looking down towards Cal, but it didn't find him. Found his teammate there in James McDonald. Down towards centre half forward, Mickey Martin, Glenn Archer, and Co. Are really feeling the heat down there in defence, along with David King. King's kick is only short. They lock it up with Bell coming in over the top, and he's been pinned, Johnny. Yeah, well, Steve Hanley obviously felt that he dived on the ball, and then when tackled, didn't immediately hit the ball clear, but um, certainly looked very hot. Ball's down. Yeah, well, the tackle has to be legal. It looks a bit like a piggyback, but uh, if we construe that as a tackle, then it's a free kick. McCartney's on half back. Looks up towards the shadows of centre wing, and a good mark taken by Ingerson. He heads in towards the centre. Melbourne at the moment playing with confidence. The kick by Liam Shelley goes down towards a right half forward. Now, who's waiting down? That's what they need. Anderson is taken out of it. They'll go back further. There'll be a Melbourne free kick. And it's going to go against Byron Pickett to be taken by, Shane, uh, to be taken by James McDonald. Pushing the back clearly. And that's sort of what I was talking about earlier. The tackle has to be legal. And uh, when players come from behind and propel their opponent forward, as Pickett did then, then it's very difficult for the umpires not to think Jeffrey it's Whoa! Big fly by Jeffrey White. Couldn't take the ball, and there'll be a throw in in the left forward pocket. Well, if you've ever seen a set move that's been practiced at training, this is it. Uh, he just put that up in the area where oh. Jeff White and Sean Smith uh, are the only Melbourne players to go. And it was a mark, really, in the end that should have been taken. Martin on the last line of defence. Just chips it up towards half back, finding Pickett. He looks towards uh, the centre of the ground. And a good, strong mark taken there by Evan Hewitt. He's an exciting young player. Hewitt looks towards half forward. North of Dearly Love another goal before quarter time. Uze tries to tap it over the back, not quite successful. It's locked up on half forward for North. I think with North struggling in the midfield uh, and Melbourne just attacking their forward line, blokes like David King and, and Pickett can't give that run off the back line, which we have seen particularly last week against West Coast. So North midfielders must pick up. Rock taken out of it. My tackle and advantage. Advantage will be paid to Shannon Grant. 55 metres out. Is this what they want? Away to the left and one behind. Well, Shannon Grant is winning plenty of the footy in the middle of the ground. Shane Way Woden also doing quite well. Grant probably just got the edge at the moment, but there's not much coming from his disposals. Paul Hopgood can find Uze on the outer side and does. We'll look down towards David Schwartz territory. He's lurking down on the centre wing at the moment. 
He fits it in towards the middle. Blakey was ripped towards the ground. Pickett is there for North Melbourne. Gets the hand pass away to his captain, who looks up towards the 50 line, towards uh, half forward. Scholl is one of the flyers. They had a couple North Melbourne. No mark paid. The question is asked by Adam Simpson right on the siren. But it falls on deaf ears as Anthony Rock picks himself up. He spent time on the bench in this first quarter as North was somewhat shell-shocked early on. A fine start by Melbourne as they stormed out of the blocks with goals from Schwartz, Neitz, Sean Smith, Jeffrey Farmer and Jeffrey White. So at quarter time, the Ds have the ascendancy. 5-2-32, North Melbourne, uh, 1 4 10 We'll take a break. Twilight footy continuing to come your way on 7. We're in big trouble just quietly, don't worry about that. <laughs> Here we go then. Second quarter, Twilight football coming away on seven. Hewitt went early. Bell goes for a roundhouse left. The D's fired up after a big first quarter. Stevens working hard for North Melbourne. He's a great little worker. Gives it to Peter Bell. North want the first. Bell kicks up towards the 50. Shatterhand says, forget the sun. I'm at the other end of the ground this time. And he takes it strongly. And uh, Dennis Pagan has put their, their trump card, uh, Kerry back, Wayne Kerry back to centre-half forward. He must start there and kick a couple of goals to the Kangaroos. Hopgood had to be accurate. He finds Carl, who's running across half-back, kicks to the wide open spaces towards the boundary line, and Shannon Grant won't get there in time. Well, Gary Lyon is playing uh, deep in the forward line. He's being picked up by Martin Pike. They've also got Jeff White. He's still uh, got Jason McCartney. And uh, they've got a lot of trumps up in that forward line with David Swartz and David Neitz. Umpire Troy Burton having a bit of a chat after that minor altercation. Play goes on. Holding it was Guy Ragoni. He loses it, spills free, and it's socket off the ground. But why? Carl and co get there too late. Now that came off the top. It'll be out on the full. Ricocheted away. So Dennis Pagan and his cohorts have their problems. This assistant coach is uh, Normie Dare. They've got to try and pull this Melbourne side back again as Shane Wawodin gets them out of trouble. Going back to halfback, only as far as David King tries to chop his way through. Gets caught but gets his kick down towards the 40-metre mark once again. And well, that's what's been missing, wide. Sandy, from the North Melbourne side. Of David King bursting through the lines, creating some options yep. up forward. Yep. Carey trying to beat two or three of them. Melbourne really attacking this ball very, very fiercely. Peter Bell's at the bottom of the pack. Finally gets it out. It's King again. It's a high kick in towards goal. This is going to be very close. Touched right on the line. One behind. Just a desperation of the Melbourne side is outstanding all over the ground. Not just their midfield, but in their forward line, their back line. They're just keen to keep that ball in their forward line. And as well, Neitz is playing Martin right up the ground where Mickey Martin doesn't like to be. Well, we had a pretty good look at uh, what the goal umpire saw. I'm not sure if I agreed what he, what he <laughs> decided. <laughs> Maybe the sun was in his eyes, Jared. Adam Uze gets a kick up towards uh, Gergic. Was it a goal, Jared? Was it? Wing. Oh, well. I think he thinks it was, but it doesn't matter. It's too late now. Play goes on. McDonald has it for Melbourne. In towards centre half forward. The height, a telling factor in the back. Jeffrey White is the flyer. I just think uh, Jeff White is too good for Jason McCartney at the minute. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Archer go back onto White and uh, put McCarthy, McCarthy up the ground to pick up Swartz. I just can't work this out at the minute. Well, it's a pretty good kick into uh, the right spot, top of the square. A bit of a nudge out. I would have thought that was uh, legitimate. And Jason McCartney just uh, outgunned, outpointed. Yeah, the important thing to mention about those, Jared, is that Jeff White simply held his ground. White going for his second. Kicked, uh, one in the early in the first turn. 25 metres out directly in front. Will not miss. Well, Melbourne again continue to build this lead and open up the margin. 38 plays 11. Well, I think Doug's uh, spot on. North Melbourne are going to have to do something remarkable to take this game out. Uh, Peter McKenna, you're in the stands. What would you do with the problem with Jeff White? Well, they, they have got a big problem. The one thing that he does lack, Jason McCartney, is pace, and that's why he didn't succeed at Collingwood. And, uh, but it's a height of what terrific coaching. Uh, this is by Neil Danaher. It's a, a great matchup. But Melbourne are matching them for toughness in the middle, and that's why they're getting him down to those talented forwards. 
Comments there from Peter McKenna as Melbourne rip it out of the middle once again. Go down towards left half forward. Neitz has got to beat down Mickey Martin. Oh, Schwartz almost trapped it beautifully. Slam and it down. spiked it back towards Neitz. He gets a high kick and back to Schwartz again. Well, the two key men for Melbourne monopolising it at the moment. Neitz has dropped down into that area. He's got his hands on it. Not long enough. Perfect pick up by David King. Off he goes to Peter Bell. Look at the pressure. It's right on north at the moment. Back towards centre wing. Who's going to be waiting down? It's Phoebe for Melbourne. Steins does the shepherding and says, go to Hopgood. And he does. Paul Hopgood, 60 metres away from goal. Lyon says, head for home. Gary Lyon on the ground. Farmer down in that forward line as well. Lyon outpointed on this occasion by Pike. He gets the hand pass away. The hurry kick is by McCartney. Under pressure. And straight under the red and blue once again. Leoncelli stands his ground. Mark's going to be paid. I'd suggest that should be a 50 metre penalty, Sandy. I mean, the mark was clearly taken moments before the contact. Um, I mean, that's not an attempt to spoil. The, the player coming in knew that the mark would be taken. I think that's a delay in play, 50-metre penalty. Here's Leon Shelley, a long way out. Had a great year last year, third in the club championship award. White was the big flyer, couldn't take it. Farmer's lurking at the back. Gary Lyon suckers off the ground. One behind. They've always been an interesting double in the goal square, Gary Lyon and Jeff Farmer. Remember that classic? <laughs> Who will ever forget it? Barmy will never forget uh, it, I tell you that. All the threes. Number three and number 33. They probably uh, should have got a goal there, but they mucked it up. But nevertheless, Gary Lyon's got his first kick for the season. I'll tell you what, talking about Neil Baum, Sandy and Jared, wouldn't he love to have Swartz, Neitz, Lyon, uh, White and Farmer in his fourth line when he was coaching? Oh, oh. Really Neitz is caught this time by Mickey Martin. Shannon Grant goes in to assist the season defender. Now it's Anthony Stevens. North out of trouble for the moment, but it is a hot kitchen for them today. Throw in on the outer side. You talk about the Sun boys uh, before. One of the boundary umpires here on the uh, member side is wearing sunglasses. So, cop that one, Dougie. <laughs> cool cat, cool umpire. He's actually been told by his ophthalmologist that he's got to wear glasses or whenever what, he's outside. What do you mean, Johnny? got bad people, has he? <laughs> all umpires should wear them, John. <laughs> Mine were prescription ones, Dipper. We had a goal umpire like that up in mean, Brisbane last week. In the meantime, Bell goes on up towards centre half forward good strong mark and surely a chance now for Scholl to kick North Melbourne's second well let's just have a look here uh, Marcus Seacamp didn't clash bodies didn't make contact didn't uh, swing a fist across his arms that's one that he should never have let Craig Scholl take the 30 year old from Horsham hoping to convert Kicking from 43 metres. Usually pretty good. So he gets it. Yeah, very good play by uh, Scholl. Continuing his great form from last week, kicking those goals. But I tell you what, gee, North Melbourne need to lift. And I keep saying this again, their midfield is certainly struggling at the minute. I think Rock's been very, very quiet. Anthony Stevens, Peter Bell hasn't done a lot either. And uh, in the Ruck, Jimmy Stein has been outstanding for the Melbourne side. And down the other end, they've got Jeff White. Uh, it looks like he's just conducting a high jump competition. <laughs> well, one thing you never do, and that is right off North Melbourne. Shoal gets their second. 6-3 plays 2-5. Whenever they have scored a goal, and it's only been twice, Melbourne has had an immediate answer. Mickey Martin almost throws it out towards Bell. He loses it, but he's got support in David King. Takes them on, does King. Kicks wide. Pressure on Abraham. He's got to beat a couple, including Cal. He's got Cal's measure. Or has he? Yes, just gets his kick in time. Inside 50 towards Mellington. Well, it's amazing what a couple of big marks can do. In front of goal, Mellington's got the chance to kick their third. This boy's got great hands, Mellington. I played football with uh, Anthony Mellington down at Fitzroy in 95, and the key to his game is certainly his marking power. At ground level, he's not that sharp, but on that occasion, great mark by young Mellington. And his kicking has been a bit of a problem, so I'm not one to say this young fella's going to dob this one. Going to be kicking from probably 40 metres. Drop punt. It's going to be very close. I reckon he's kicked it. Dougie. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, Sandy, I knew you'd kick that goal. He's a very good kick for the goal, young Mellington. He is a super kick for the goal, that young kid. Not that he's just a great mark, but oh, sharp, oh, sharp kick of a goal, the young fella. Yeah, nice use of the reverse, Moz, Doug. But if you have a look at their midfield, as you've uh, pointed out a few times, Doug, they're not getting the disposals. Even if you look at their averages, uh, Anthony Stevens, best on the ground by Miles last week. He's only had six touches. Peter Bell, who's been a star for them, has only got seven. Shannon Grant's got six. And Rock's been an on-off the bench. North Melbourne hitting back. Couple of quick goals. 39 plays, 23. Down towards Carey once again. He's in trouble. Gets rid of it very, very smartly. Shannon Grant showed dash. Bell tried to intercept. That was unsuccessful. It's going to be Hopgood on the end of the hand pass for Melbourne, who goes to the outer side, and David Neitz again has to beat a couple. Stevens is pressuring him towards the line. And it's over on the outer side. Dougie. And uh, Mickey Martin's gone down to uh, full back to pick up Jeff White. So that's an interesting move too, uh, Jared, for the uh, North Melbourne side, because up the ground on Neitz, Mickey Martin certainly struggled. Yeah, I think you're right. They've got Mick uh, back in his best position he's not lost at center half back but i think he's best uh, in the body to body work at full back strong mark by schwartz on the 50. no one home so he drifts it in towards uh, center half forward and brent gergen had made position there in that hole he'll have a shot again melbourne the chance to answer the north challenge and he's a very talented young man brent gergen he's got a terrific frame very wide shoulders more bone than muscle at the present time, but uh, a couple of seasons in the weight room and he'll improve in that area. So the youngster from Bell Post Hill, kicking from 40 metres from Melbourne, puts it straight through the middle. Well, good reply there from Melbourne after uh, North just looking as if they're getting their act together, but they're obviously... Uh, going to have to fight far harder than they are North Melbourne because I think Melbourne are ready for them. They're primed after a disappointing loss to Fremantle last week. They obviously worked pretty hard and long during the week and uh, this is an upset in the making. Neil Danaher looking for his first win in the Coca-Cola series as coach of Melbourne. Still a long way to go. We know how North fight Bell around the body towards Carey. Needs assistance down there, but it's Phoebe who whips it out like lightning to Cal. Sensational play. Melbourne's away through Shane Woe Woden. Short little chip is going to be okay. McDonald is on right half forward. The lead is on in towards 50. Lyon props at the moment. Farmer trying to storm through. Couldn't take the footy with him. White gets out the hand pass. Pickett couldn't take it. Here's an opportunity again as the snap is high, but it's very, very wide by Ragoni. Anthony Rock having another spell, and don't forget for those uh, fired up on the website, that's what you've got to dial into if you want to do a little bit of a surfing. Here's Gary Lyon, runs out of room. just to test out how the back is. Byron Pickett saying welcome back. Correct. And just have a look at that uh, ineffective Shepherd there. McDonald didn't uh, turn his eyes to the play, so he uh, allowed Pickett to come through. Here's Palmer. Kick is smothered. King defends. Blakey gets a very bad bounce. Carey, intelligent stuff. Back to Gone Wolf Blakey. The and the umpire's down. So too was Blakey. Play goes on. Lancelli is going to be paid the ball between centre and half four. You look down towards the forward line. Gary Lyon leads out and says go long. So that flat looking helicopter punt goes down towards the full forward. David King's at the back. His hand passes wide. It's going to be a free kick. It's going to go to North Melbourne. Doug, do you think we'll ever see a footballer wearing sunglasses? <laughs> Matter of fact, the training a couple of, year ago, couple of years ago at Footscray, which are now the Western Bulldogs, Simon Atkins used to wear yeah. training uh, sunglasses. Blakey on the other side. Anything for an endorsement. We won't see it, Jared, I think. No, I think you're right, but uh, well, Jeff Farmer and Byron Pickett going toe-to-toe -to -toe there, just a show of strength. 
I'm not sure who won. Maybe we'll call it a uh, nil all draw that one. Here's Way Woden again for Melbourne in towards Jeff White. It bounced uh, very fortuitously for him. Now back to Martin, however. Mickey picks it up and kicks to half back. It's going to be okay. Anthony Stevens thought about going and goes back to take his kick. Stevens is between half back and centre wing. Pops it up towards Mellington. Ingerson is there with an effective spoil. Brady Anderson waiting down. Pops it out in front, then goes again to Anderson. Bends it back in towards the 50. Melbourne has the numbers there. Seacamp hand pass is going to be okay. The spear to Cowell is good. Melbourne have got the numbers. Cowell has a look down towards the forward line. That's Some awesome. holding on going on there, and it's not very subtle. And yet the umpire, I think it was Stephen Handy, was right there. Play goes on. Look at the farmer magic. Which way will this one bounce? That's holding against uh, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. So across <laughs> the pike, another Martin towards half back. And this time, the mark is paid to John Blakey. Well, well the the Johnny Russell has been strangely quiet. Well, you blokes have been talking all the time. <laughs> well, you can interrupt. <laughs> Here goes Shannon Grant. We'll get you in a moment, John. Shannon Grant to half forward. Scholl was the target. Ragoni defends. He goes again. Loses the football, does Ragoni. Now an opportunity again for Abraham to half forward for North. Goals have been like gold. As far as the boys from Arden Street are concerned. Steins gets it away nicely to Cal. He goes to the outer side. They've got the numbers. They've got the space. They've also got four or five marking options in the forward line. And uh, North Melbourne are struggling to find a correct matchup for each and every one of them. David Neats a little easy on that occasion. Shanahan trying to spoil from behind. Jim Steins is there also. The gang tackling of Melbourne continues. Carey around the body. A rainmaker, and don't we need it? Mellington in the pack. Couldn't take it cleanly. Neither could Grant. Push down towards the forward line. More danger as Grant picks it up for North Melbourne. Can he get a clear run? He can't. He chips with that left foot that he loves so much in towards half forward. Gergic was there for Melbourne. Couldn't take it. So too, Ingerson. An opportunity for Peter Bell. Bell does it for North Melbourne at last. Yeah, it's a long time between drinks. I'll tell you what, North, every time they go forward, Jared, there's a bit of a struggle there. And that applies to the pressure that Melbourne certainly has put on, put on the North Melbourne side. And very rarely have we seen North Melbourne, in years gone by, kick the ball blindly into their forward line, and particularly even around the midfield. Players are just getting the ball and just kicking it without even looking where they're disposing the football. Yes, and, uh, well, it was Wayne Carey that was bombing the ball down. Usually he's on the end of them. 45 plays 29. And interesting that uh, North Melbourne are trying to uh, find some more run in the middle of the ground. Winston Abrahams has gone in. Peter Bell now into the forward pocket. Well, he's certainly got some zip as Winston. The kick's interesting. Under pressure, it's high. Brady Anson gives chase. Needs a kind bounce because Jeff Farmer's right on his hammer. He was held, Farmer. Phoebe's in trouble. Farmer close to the line. And... <laughs> well... He went for the boomerang. He was uh, very quick thinking. <laughs> but it was a case that my boomerang won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill be done, Jared and Sandy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's oh. a very quick thinking footballer. He's uh, Jeff Farmer. He just uh, was absolutely magical there. King. I think Dougie's lost it. Uh, interception, Martin Pike. Thought he had his name on that. Phoebe's hand pass is also smothered. Uze caught, tackled by Anderson. Spilled free. Abraham gets the hand pass out towards the centre wing. A chance for North through Evan Hewitt. High kick towards the 50 once again. Player waiting down was Mellington in front of the pack. Holding. No free kick. Thank you, John. It was holding. Bell goes on with it. Now there's been a whistle. And it's going to come back. Brett Chandler will take the kick. Yep. Still a long way from home. Probably 70 metres out. Well, a very crucial six or seven minutes now in this game. If North can get another goal here and close it to 10 points, we know how they hang on. They're very, very gritty, and Melbourne has been known to fade, so it could be a very interesting second half. Steins finds Gergen. In the hectares of open space on the outer side. First two, it'll be Pickett. Just chips it over the top. 
it's a dangerous one because the player usually has to sit and wait. Blake is filled with courage. He kicks the half forward. Steins again has to wait, then plays on. Loses the football in the process. Picked up by Ragoni. Round the body. Here's danger because uh, Travis Johnson has come onto the ground. This youngster, but his kick is a poor one. Mickey Martin has it. He's beautifully tackled. Well done by Gary Lyon. Well, he's pumped up and he's inspiring these days at the moment. And Mick Martin was a loose man in defence because Jeff White had pushed up into the middle of the ground. I think he's looking for a change with Jim Steins. In fact, Steins may just come off the ground and uh, have a bit of a breather. But each and every matchup in the Melbourne forward line looks to be in favour from a height and pace perspective of uh, Melbourne at this moment. An exciting pick up from Wode, but he gets caught. Rogoni tumbles a punt to the forward line. And Meeks takes the mark directly in front, 20 metres out. There's not much there McCarthy could do that one uh, at all there, Jared. The kick was just favoured uh, Swartz to go over the top of the shoulder there to Neek, sorry, over his shoulder. So there's nothing much there could do McCarthy. He was caught out. No, it was a brilliant kick, though, to the top of the square. It, you know, a real discipline of modern-day football. If you're in doubt, that's where they've got to go. And Neeks would, would have known that uh, specifically. This for his second. He makes no mistake, Melbourne again answers. And as you mentioned before, Jared Healy, uh, Jeff White has now gone into the ruck, and Jimmy Steins has gone in the forward pocket, mate, so you're absolutely spot on with that call, because I think Steins has been an outstanding ruckman on the ground so far in this game. It'll be great to see uh, young White go into the ruck and to be matched up against Anthony Mellington, so two guys who can jump. Great combination between a couple of the Melbourne midfield there, Ragoni on the end of it, top kick. Twenty-two points again, the margin favouring the Demons. Mellington doing the ruck work up against uh, the exciting Jeffrey White. Socket out of the air now. Travis Johnson's got to sit and wait. Bit of tunnel ball, tunnel ball work by Johnston. He'll get another chance here, Travis. Brady Anderson wearing him like a glove. Schwartz gets the hand pass away towards Hopgood. Pops one up in the air and Phoebe stands his ground. Uze, and free kick paid against Uze for shepherding then, which is uh, interesting because the ball was certainly well away. It must be within five metres and everybody will wonder that, what that was for, but clearly for shepherding. Neil Danner would be not happy about that because Anderson has it and he can put North Melbourne inside 50. Scholl comes out but there's a huge pack storming over the top and the tallest of the lot was Jeffrey White. He's a problem. No doubt about that. Find Schwartz. He's got Uze down towards centre wing and uses that player. Centering kick by Uze is okay. Again, finding White. Everyone pretty well manned up. Archer could have given a nudge from behind. And this is a problem that North Melbourne have got. Uh, just take this match up. Archer, he'd be relatively as quick as uh, David Neitz, but he's just too small, and he knew that. He was going to be outgunned, so he went for a bit of body work. The other end of the ground, Pike's online. You've got Martin on Steins. They're too short. Listen to that roar for Gary Lyon. Great to see Lyon take that mark, but Pike, did Martin Pike get into his backman, into his teammates, and not ch cutting that, uh, that lead off? He's had an amazing run, Gary Lyon. Last year played just five games. In 96, he played only six. And interesting, when he's been firing, so too has Melbourne. You'd back him here, Sandy, wouldn't you? My word. 46 metres. Welcome back, Gary oh. Lyon. They stand as one, this crowd. Well, he's had a pretty fair record of winning games when he has appeared in this side over the last couple of seasons. Even when he's been absolutely injured uh, with no right whatsoever from a medical perspective to be out on the ground. He pulled off a couple of victories for Melbourne last season. And Jim Stein just coming off the ground for a rest. And Donald Cockatoo Collins adds some pace to the forward line. Well, there's a sight that Melbourne fans have seen too little of in recent years.
Melbourne a 9-3, North a 4-5. The Roos challenged early on in this quarter. Melbourne, at the moment, though, have every answer in the book. Precious seconds ticking away. Cockatoo Collins is on the ground. Here's Travis Johnston. Clever hand pass by the youngster to David Neitz. Neitz goes for goal, but he's away to the right. Sandy, just a quick update on Sean Smith. Hang time, Sean Smith, as you call him. He's off the ground with a jarred left knee and uh, looks like he won't be back on the ground for the rest of the day. And there's no better sight to see teammates uh, congratulate Gary Lyon there. Well done. Yeah, it's a great sight, wasn't it, Dipper? Just on that, Dipper, Darren Cowell rang down, ran yeah. down from the wing to congratulate Gary Lyon on the goal. Here's David King. Well, he gets there, or does he? Chandler couldn't take it on the half volley. Phoebe does take the hand pass, pumps it back into the forward line once again. Melbourne have got the numbers. Look who's at the back. Jeffrey can't take it cleanly. Oh. Cockatoo Collins was taken high. He knows it, that beaming little smile at the bottom of the pack. When I say, oh, Sandy, it means I would have blown the whistle. Yeah, I know, we know that Jared and <laughs> they looked at each other. And thought, oh, he's still there. It looked like Mount Melbourne there, Jerry, was going to muck that up. I mean, they had three or four players there. That should have been a soda goal for them. I think Farmer did the right thing by staying down at ground level. Should have been an easy goal for Melbourne. It was actually the uh, notorious Farmer Lion double. <laughs> here they are. Like on the road three, of each other here. And number 33. <laughs> Paging Neil Baum. Oh, dear. Well, he's just come onto the ground. The young man from Port Adelaide. And really put the seal on this quarter for Melbourne. Point blank range. He doesn't miss. Well, that's one for uh, Neil Danaher, isn't it? Because he just put Donald Cockatoo Collins onto the ground. Steins came off. They got a little bit of extra pace into that forward line. And there's that uh, double that we spoke about. They're going to have to work it out. Uh, but one thing we have learned here today is that when John Russo says, ooh, he feels like blowing a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> well, the margin now out to 35 points. 64 plays, 29 in this second term. Twilight footy, round two. Here he goes again. Jeffrey Farmer, number 33. Couldn't take it. Things really heating up now as far as North Melbourne are concerned. The bell hand pass goes astray. Lee and Shelley is OK to Hopgood. Tumbles a punt inside 50 once again. That sun is still causing problems for Archer. Not so for Neitz. Getty Lyon! Go to Getty Lyon! Yes! <laughs> Say goodnight to the folks, Gracie, at this stage. And we're not even at a halfway mark. It's all over Red Rover here, Jared Healy. I think, I tell you what, I don't like calling a, calling a game that early over, but I tell you what, it looks ordinary for North Melbourne here. Look at the sharpness oh. of these hands from Swartz. Just to give it uh, quickly to Gary Lyon, who just had a yard break. I would have thought uh, that Mickey would have picked him up, but got the ball onto the boot beautifully. Dougie is... Uh, oh, it's over, you're right. Jared. It's going to take a monumental performance by North Melbourne. If it wasn't North Melbourne out there at the moment... You'd say it was 100% this over, but uh, we know that they can come back. 41 points, boys. Now the margin. Robert Scott, a high kick up towards a left half forward. A minute and a half remaining. Oh. But uh, they're in all sorts of trouble, North Melbourne. They need goals and they need them smartly. Carey down in that forward line has it bustled away from him. I don't know the answer there, Jared, of playing uh, Wayne Kerry back in that forward, full forward area. I mean, the ball's not getting down there enough for them to have the opportunity to kick goals. He's got to be up at centre-half forward or even maybe on the board to lift their side. They need something, and he's the man to do it. Here's Bell, round the body, in towards the left forward pocket region, and young Evan Hewitt couldn't take it. Kerry just pops it out in front, out into the space. They'll close on it, Uze. Fierce and skillful is Adam Uze, but an excellent smother. He's going to keep the ball in that region by Brady Anderson. Just kept in play. Blakey is caught. No ooing or ahhing from Johnny Russo. No, I mean, that, that can't be a free kick for holding the ball because he didn't have an opportunity before the tackle was laid on Blakey. 
I mean, Blakey really just gathered possession of the footy, then tackled by, uh, by Uze, so not a free kick. Throw in then, in the right forward pocket. But if he'd had a little bit longer, Dougie, I would have ooed. You would have ooed? <laughs> I would have ooed. <laughs> Where can the kangaroos lift Jared Healy? Where can they find something? Well, their great strengths generally are their, their midfield. They're, they're workers, and at the moment, they're being outdone in that department. You, you look at uh, the likes of Ragoni and Wo Woden, uh, a number of other players. Hopgood's been particularly good in the middle of the ground. Not big names in AFL circles, but certainly winning new reputations early in this season. Seacamp brings it back towards Jeff White. Brody Anderson does the roving work. Hand pass had to be spot on. It wasn't quite. Hopgood has been effective to Cal. He gets the hand pass back towards Marcus Seacamp. Good smother. Anderson again, but he loses it. Johnston, welcome to the big time, Travis. And just on that point there, uh, gentlemen, uh, Jared, every Melbourne player has contributed today, uh, and their pace and their school level has just been fantastic. So it's half time, Dipper. Twilight time, maybe, for North Melbourne. They're in trouble here at the MCG in round two against an inspired Melbourne, led by young Jeffrey White. Gary Lyon up forward, who's come back and kicked two goals in that second term. It's half-time. Melbourne are 11-4. 70, a six-goal term for the Ds, and Neil Danaher, North, in trouble. 4-5, 29. So the big question is, can North come back in this second half? An exciting first half by Melbourne. 70 plays, 29. They've thrown down the challenge. As David Schwartz does a 360, pirouetting in the middle. Swings it wide to David King, who defends for North Melbourne. Kicks it back towards the left half forward flank region. North need goals rapidly. Robert Scott runs into a brick wall. And the umpire is saying, you threw it out. And it's going to be a Melbourne ball. The D's having all the answers. Gary Lyon kicked a couple of goals in that second quarter. He inspired Melbourne. He lifted them as Ingerson kicks the right half forward. David Neitz is there. Neitz booted two in the first half. One in each quarter. Kicks towards centre half forward. Big pack of players. Farmer was waiting down. So too is Bell. Peter Bell tries to flick it further on. Steins tries to halt that movement. Pressure on North as Bell flicks it back towards the centre. Here's Robert Scott. And the whole hit. North Melbourne forward line has pushed up the ground, which has left Carey on Shanahan one out. He goes for home, 55 metres out. It's a long kick and it's an exciting mark. Right in the square by Winston, the 23-year-old from Fremantle. Well, it was great running work there by Winston Abraham because he started about 60 metres away from where, in fact, he ended up marking the ball. Wayne Carey wasn't going to make the distance you wouldn't have thought and uh, he provided that option and Doug this fellow is an exciting player he certainly is Jared and he goes now for his goal he's kicked the goal for North Melbourne that's their fifth goal good play by Wayne Kerry maybe that'll spark them up to start this second half they've got a lot of ground still to make up I think you whacked it on the head before, Jared, that North Melbourne have a very open forward line. And if North are going to get back into this game, it's a great captain again, Wayne Kerry, and uh, a very much open forward line. And Jamie Shanahan may lack that bit of pace to play on Wayne Kerry, so that could be a big arch of him to, uh, to pick him up. So, uh, you know, very important. 70 plays, 35. 35 points the margin as the shadows lengthen here at the MCG in this twilight game big jim steins down to paul hopgood in the middle hopgood sends melbourne forward towards farmer territory well we got one hand to it and then he trapped it beautifully on the half volley but finally lost it pickett gets the hand pass out towards stevens anthony stevens looks towards center wing and he finds john blakey blakey swings around david neitz gets it towards the 50. Scoring goals, though, has been the problem. Uze is caught. He was taken high. He may have been a little lucky. Who knows? 
Whether Johnny Russo is back with his microphone, time will tell. Yeah, JR is back on the air, and that tackle was oh. clearly high from outside where we are, but from where Steve Hanley was, he would have been unsighted and certainly wouldn't have seen the fact that Uze was tackled high. JR Maybe. it is now. <laughs> well, it's well, unbelievable, I, isn't I've it? I've answered to worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you worse than that too in your day. <laughs> Uze, back towards centre wing. The Melbourne control continues. Gergic has it. Looks towards the right half forward. Now, this holding's an interesting one, isn't it? Yep. And it does appear to continue, JR. Well, well, it does, Sandy, and the reason it does is because the umpire is uncertain as to who instigates it and who is, in fact, holding. If it's a nil-all draw, as Jared mentioned before, the umpire won't pay a free kick, and they were both doing it. Scott tries to control it down towards McCartney, who flicks it towards the line. Well, Melbourne wouldn't be happy with that start uh, to this quarter because out of the uh, rooms... They were just telling their play, they dictated the game, keep on dictating the game by doing the same things they did in that first half of football, and that's attack the football and contribute. I tell you, how often have you seen North Melbourne this stage of a game, only five goals on the board with single goal kick? It's very, very rare. Uze, oh, he could be hurt. It's at the bottom of the pack. Collided heavily. I might just take another look at this around the neck because you would think that uh, the umpire is about the only fellow out on the ground that can't see that this is around the neck. I think you're being pretty fair, pretty no, lenient on no, it, John. No, Jared, he was at centre-half forward. The only people that would have been able to see that is people outside the play, and uh, that certainly wasn't where the umpire was. Ball on centre wing. Here's David King. Trying to make a little path for himself, but Ragoni... Sheer persistence by Guy Ragoni. Bernie Ragoni gets it across to Hopgood. He's in trouble, but he gives it to Farmer. Mr. Magic, 46 metres from home. Farmer! Here it comes again now, and uh, that is actually taken from the boundary line side. The umpire is to the left of that contest and certainly wouldn't have seen it. David King to bring it back in. 11-5 plays 5-5. Five, five. Straight down the middle. Steins, the effective spoiler. Rogoni picking up plenty of touches but loses it on this oh. occasion. Maybe North can start something. Pike does the shepherding for Scott. They look dangerous now, North Melbourne, but they need a mark in the half-forward line. They don't get it at the moment. Here's a Winston dodging out of trouble. Swings around and goal for North Melbourne. Winston has kicked two in this turn. Well... This week in the paper, Gary Lyon wrote a very interesting article about clean players. And that is, not players that uh, don't get themselves dirty, but those that handle the ball with great surety. And if we uh, have a look back, you'll see that Guy Ragoni drops a ball. He fumbles it uh, from the kicking. But this is uh, later on down the ground, a magnificent shot of uh, the conversion. But it was the two grab, the fumble at uh, centre-half back that initially cost Melbourne this goal. 30 points the margin. North continue to close the gap. Can they win it out of the centre? A cry of ball goes up, but it spills free towards Scott, who had it only for a moment. He needs help, and he gets it through Scholl. May come back towards Stevens. The bouncing ball a little too high for him. Mellington is across half forward. Around the body he goes. Down towards the 50-metre line, and it beats players over the line. Another throw in. Dug it. It's only natural to go, the thought process to go through your mind that you've got to protect the lead. As Melbourne are right at the moment, 30 points up, uh, but they've got to go on and play positive footy, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do, Jared. No doubt about that. You're spot on there. And where they're going to do that, Steins must continue to, to dominate in the ruck. And their midfielder, who's been very good in the first half, I think Robert Scott's coming on the ground and add a bit of fire to the North Melbourne side. Leon Shelley gives it to Steins. He chips towards Farmer. Back he goes to Rogoni. Melbourne goes streaming out of the trouble through Phoebe, up towards the 50 metre. Well, this holding is going to be a contentious one. It has been in the past and will continue to be so. Stevens takes out uh, Johnston as Pickett gets a kick towards centre wing. Waiting down Phoebe for Melbourne. Looks towards right half for David Neitz, one-handed. Farmer! Now watch this. Into the open goal goes the lightning machine. A couple of ounces, oh, a little dash and bumped it through. <laughs> Unbelievable there, I'll tell you what. 
Now, Jared Healy in that situation, <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant roping by Farmer. But if you're a North Melbourne defenders, we're talking about Pike and Martin. Do you stay with your man or do you come out and meet the guy? I reckon you sort of sum it up and what you got to do, I think you got to come out and meet him. I mean, he just ran straight up and goal on that occasion. He did, in fact, he did it pretty well because he feigned a handball. Yeah. And uh, that uh, really did put the defenders off their game. But the time to go is when the fellow puts his head down to bounce the ball. That's the only time when the defender hasn't got a clear picture in front of him. But you've got to go, don't you? You've got to go at all times. You've got to go, Dip. <laughs> Bloody oath you do. All right, we're on air, Dip. <laughs> no excuse, Dip. Down towards half forward. He's an excitement machine, isn't he, yeah, Jeffrey Farmer? Here's Jamie Shanahan. Defending on half back towards Wo Woden. Couldn't take it. Mellington. A little pirouette out towards Anthony Stevens. Kept in play, however, by Ragoni. Ragoni tumbles a putt back towards the middle. Steins a favourable bounce. Keaton got an awful one. Farmer's on the end of another one. Taking it from David Neat. 50 metres out. Tried the centering kick. A bad bounce for Mickey Martin. May open the door for Jeff White. Tries to slap it back to his own advantage. Martin off the ground towards Blakey. He's got to beat a couple, so he decides to belt it clear and it spins away. Look at that. Now, Sandy, just on that point there about going at the player, that's the first thing you learn in football. Yeah, I think you're right there, Dibber. I reckon you've got to come out and meet the player. And we're talking about Jeff Farmer, who had about four bounces a minute ago and kicked that goal. We had Martin and Pike refusing to leave their opponents. I think you're right, Dipper. There, you're spot on. But there's no point in going if a fellow's only just going to deliver a little handball over into the 10 yard, into the 10 metre square, and. Uh, he dribble one, dribbles one through. Here's Pickett. One of those uh, perplexing situations, though. <laughs> Wide on the outer side. Doug's still pondering that word, perplexing. <laughs> Melbourne maintaining control through Phoebe. He runs the boundary line. So too does our man in the dark glasses towards White, the one-hander. <laughs> No wonder Jared here they paid 500,000 for this guy. I <laughs> paid <laughs> 5 million for this. Inflation's <laughs> running poor, running very highly, isn't it? This kid's got the potential to be an absolute superstar, young Jeff White. Brilliant catch here, one hand, just plucks it in. Oh. He would have been tough to beat. The old kick to kick at high school, and uh, well, if he didn't win the high jump every year, I'd like to see the fellow that did. This yeah. is for number three, for Jeff White. 40 metres out, up goes the red and blue. Dougie was a bit small at primary school, so he used to wax with a bloke that was bigger than Jeff White. <laughs> uh, I was good at the long step and jump, you know, that one we had three three. It was hop, with... step and jump. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> hop, step and jump. <laughs> oh, well, something like that. I was reasonably good at that, hop, well, step and jump. Well, there's the jump, and in comes Jeff White. Gary Lyon just uh, allowing the youngster to come through. He knows he's the future of Melbourne. And Neitz gives in a big bear hugging. Congratulations. Well, the margin just continues to grow. North threatened early with a couple of goals. Melbourne hit back hard. Out of the middle, it's Leon Celli. Held it for a long time. Gets a short kick. David King, an uncharacteristic fumble, but he goes again. Tries to chop his way clear, but has real trouble. McCartney ripped off the ball by Hopgood. He loses it to Schwartz. He looks towards Neitz. Couldn't take it, but he's going to be quick to recover. Where are his teammates? Farmer will be lurking somewhere. Cockatoo Collins is there as well. Now they go. And here is Jeffrey. The bouncing ball will beat them all, but it's too wide. Going across the plates of goal and one behind. And he's not a happy camper. Well, on this performance, Doug, as we have a look at uh, Jeffrey Farmer, and he's going to play a fair part in uh, my next comment, Melbourne, on this performance, are going to challenge for the eight if they can keep their side fit. Oh, no doubt there, Jared. I do agree with you. And particularly uh, with their ruck situation with Steins and White, people at the start, well, I say people, the media, thought there may be a problem with those two guys. But I tell you what, it's not a bad problem to have for Neil Danaher. And you've still got Viney, Lovett, Tingay and Co. to come back. Bit of toughness there. And plenty of skill. Oh, oh, it's a North Melbourne kick to the King. Wayne Carey. And this is why, yeah, John Russell. I mean, well, it's, that, that is a free kick, clearly, but it wasn't paid then. It was paid much later. Um, it's actually paid after the, the vision ended there, but uh, clearly a free kick, so no problem with that at all. 
the result of goal. Well, quite unbelievable that they're six goals, one behind down. North Melbourne really haven't looked threatening at any stage, Dave. Not at all, uh, Jared and Dave. Even though Kerry's been fairly quiet, he's probably had over probably 10 to 12 kicks, and that was his second goal. But I'm still not quite sure if he's the option down there, totally in their forward line at full forward. I'd like to see maybe Kerry come up the ground, and maybe, as I said a bit earlier, maybe even come on the ball. Well, Wayne Kerry just uh, popping it over, getting Scotty Welsh into the game. So Welch has his first and North seventh. 7-5 seven plays. 13-6. Steins again. The gloved one wins it. Peter Bell gets the hand pass away. A whistle in that, that ball will come back. Some holding on. Well, the light's on here at the MCG, but as far as North Melbourne are concerned at the moment, not too many at home. Hewitt takes the kick, puts them inside 50. This time, Carey rises alone. Distance won't be a problem if he decides to go for it. Because he can roost the ball. Well, he left very early for this, as we see. Great hang time there. Just had to uh, jump to get away from Jamie Shanahan. Great athleticism. Carey for his first from 53 metres. Long a drop punt. Long drop punt is good. Back they come again with a couple, 8 5, plays 13 6. That was so used to uh, Wayne Kerry doing that sort of thing, and the side is certainly struggling. Great goal by Kerry there, it's his second goal. And just uh, too much latitude there by Jamie Shanahan for Wayne Kerry. He's got to play him a little bit tighter. It's uh, easy to call it off a, off a replay. He's got the problems out on the ground. Thirteen six plays eight five. McKenna is in the stands. That's Peter McKenna. We'll be crossing to him in just a moment. In the meantime, there's a little bit of how do you do going on in the middle with Hopgood, Steins, Leoncelli, and Co. Peter McKenna. Yes, Dennis Pagan's done the right thing here by having a, all his eggs in two baskets. I see Shatterhand's going off Carey. Carey and Abraham down on their own in the goal square. Good thinking by Dennis Pagan. It's creating a few problems for Melbourne. Well, you've certainly revolutionised the saying, Pete. All the eggs in two baskets instead of one. And they've got Ingerson now down onto Wayne Kerr. I think that was the uh, the good move there from Melbourne. Ingerson has been able to go with Wayne Carey for pace. And it did look as if uh, Shanahan was going to be exposed. Brady Anderson from the middle of the ground. Carey has got to beat three. Welsh does the roving and he bends it back, but he goes across the face. The mark will be paid to see camp right on the very last line. Coming out of the sunshine into the shadows. Sea camp looks towards Steins. Hewitt was taken out of it. Liam Chelly was also there. Blakey's hand pass towards Abraham. He in turn finds Stevens from a standing start. Pumps it high. Defensive mark almost taken. Shanahan. Goes wider to Uze. Saw him at the corner design, did well. Adam Uze is away to the outer side. Cockatoo Collins, a little too high for him. Pickett is there also. A chance now for Byron Pickett. Swings around, looks towards the 50. Phoebe will be late on the scene. Does get the spoil in, however. Ooh. Mellington. And the North Melbourne crowd, ropeable. That, that wasn't paid either a free kick or a mark. Inside 50, and this will be paid. Hewitt is inside 50 for the Ruse. What do you think, John? What would you have paid the free kick for, Jerry? In the back? Well, I didn't think he pushed him in the back. Scared him out of it, but I don't think he pushed him in the back. This 19-year-old from Subiaco can close the gap for North Melbourne. From just on 50, and he's done exactly that. Hewitt gets his first. <laughs> yes, where there's life, there's hope, and uh, every North Melbourne supporter think that uh, they can come back. They've had a very good history over in recent times of having big second halves. Coming back against St Kilda when uh, all was seemingly lost. The Here same. it is again. Here it is again. The same against uh, St Kilda. Let's just have a look whether or not he did have control of this mark. North Melbourne fans definitely thought so. 
Yeah, I'd pay that one. <laughs> so North continue to close the gap. 84 plays 59. Next one's going to be very, very important. Can Melbourne answer? Steins off the ground. Gary Lyon, the juggling mark. Is paid. I think the Gary of old, Gary Lyon of old will kick this goal being about 55 metres out, but this just may test him, I think. As against the old Gary Lyon. Yes, that's right. <laughs> the old Gary Lyon would have kicked this, uh, Jared, I think. Going to be close. He's back, the old Gary Lyon. <laughs> he answers for the D's. Oh, my hat. 14-6 plays 9-5. Well, they needed that one to settle them down a bit, Doug. Get North Melbourne on the rampage if they had have got the next one. The nervous tension would have just started to bottle up in the throat area. Yeah, I think Melbourne may have started going backwards a bit, too, as you did uh, Terman. <laughs> Jared on me. <laughs> I called you Terman then. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three goals to Gary Lyon. Melbourne answer. White on all fours. Gets it out again. They go charging down inside 50. One hand was not enough for Schwartz, but look at Farmer. Now, this will swing back. Gee, he did well, but not quite enough. Well, he has been exciting today. He's hit the packs. He's done exactly what his coach, I'm sure, would have asked. That's go up the ground. As soon as the ball gets kicked over your head, just sprint to the base of the, base of the pack, base of the contest. And uh, no wonder he's feeling a bit tight in the hammy. Shanahan at the back. Drops it. And this could open the door for Shannon Grant as he spears it in towards the forward line in Winston. This will test his pace now, Abraham. Still in the pocket, but he's being pressured all the way. Well done by Darren Cow. Has it taken over? Yeah, good play there by uh, Cow there. I mean, the pressure was certainly on him there. Abraham had a little life to the North Melbourne forward line by kicking a couple of goals. But it was good hard work by Cow. He was caught out of position too by uh, Abraham. So good effort by him. White and Carey. Here's Abraham. Two goals. The farmer's coming off for a spell. Might have been the applause you could hear in the background. Could have been uh, hamstrung slightly. Who knows? We'll get a report on that from Dipper anyway. But in the meantime, Blakey has possession of the ball on the outer side. And he takes him on. Has a bounce. Kicks long in towards Carey. Now, where is he? There what he is. <laughs> what a catch. In the words of Richie, what a catch. Still hanging in there, North Melbourne. They've got Craig Scholl off the ground. I just uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him come back just for this last part of the third quarter. But this is brilliant. Just absolutely sensational. I and mean, a great look at it as well. How do you stop him, Jerry, when a player does that to you? Pushes you out of position. Brilliant play by, by Wayne Carey. This for his second. Won't miss from 15 metres out. Well, the big question is, can they take the next step and move closer? They can promise a couple, but then Melbourne has had the ability to answer. 14-7 plays 10-5. Well, Melbourne have dominated the centre bounce clearances, and if North Melbourne are going to get into this game, they've got to get the ball into their forward line quickly. Get the ball down to Carey one on one. This is what happens when he is one out against the most players in the AFL. He does generally mark the footy. Conversion from that distance, not a problem. They've got to start by winning it from this bounce. So back in the middle once again, 91 plays 65. Bell out of the centre for North, but it doesn't travel very far. Phoebe pokes it back to Ragoni. Melbourne have had the ability to answer. Ragoni kick is long towards Schwartz. Lyon is there also. He needs help, and he needs it badly. He gets it from Wawoden, tucked on the boundary line. And kick is wide. In fact, that was young McDonald down in that forward pocket region. There Sandy, just a uh, update on Jeff Farmer down here. He's suffering from cramps, so it's not a hamstring injury, which is very good for him. And uh, when Wayne Kerry took that mark, I've got to tell you, the North bench just went up as one, and one wouldn't you? No, it was sensational, wasn't it? So a bit of cramp there for Jeffrey Farmer, who's done a bit of running. But he is a real excitement machine, and that's what we need. Archer stands his ground. Controlled aggression from David Schwartz. So an important six minutes now in this third term. Towards uh, David Neitz at the centre wing. Adam Uze also. Gets around Mickey Martin. Ragoni running with the flight of the ball. Simpson takes the mark. 
And Doug Dennis Pagan just absolutely keen to expose Jamie Shanahan for pace. They've got Craig Scholl back on at centre forward. He's one on one now with Jamie Shanahan. Yeah, big concern for the uh, Melbourne side, particularly Shanahan up the ground. Well, somebody ruled them. Somebody ruled them. That was uh, clearly in danger. Clearly, yeah. I just think, too, North Melbourne's midfield is starting to get back in the game, particularly Stevens. Uh, even though Shannon Grant, Shannon Grant's been a good player all day for North Melbourne, he's really he's played a great game for the uh, North Melbourne side. Well, Woden towards half forward. Travis Johnson was lurking there, but uh, he couldn't take it. Here's David Neitz around the body. He swings it towards Gaddy Lyon. Can't take it. Waiting down is Hopgood. He runs into a brick wall, and it's all blue and white. Lyon goes again. He tried to find Hopgood, oh, but instead it was stolen and pushed towards centre wing. May wobble over the line. Well, Simpson's taken over, and it will be thrown. Pushing the back page uh, oh, to yes. Simpson, even though the ball was over the boundary line, that free kick can be paid. Got the decision by the umpire. Smack bang in front of the Melbourne members. Simpson goes in towards the middle. Shanahan was one of the flyers at the back. While well, Woden's hand pass was interesting, and they're still not out of the danger zone. And here's David King for North Melbourne, sneaking out the back door, forgets about the hand pass and says, I'll do it myself. And he does with a long kick that is off target. I believe uh, David King should have got the handball out there. He had a couple of North Melbourne players in a better position than he was, even though we know he loves to carry the, the footy and kick those goals, but that home handball was certainly on. Bit of cramp there, as we saw from uh, Jeff Farmer. That's why he's having a spell. But as Dipper said, he'll be okay. Leon Celli takes the kick in. He's at half back. Towards Jeff White. A nice bit of pressure there from Anthony Millington. He looks to be going one on one with Jeff White. He's certainly got the spring and the pace to go with him. Just get the feeling, Joe, that North need two before three quarter time if they're going to really challenge in the final term. Well, Woden towards centre wing, uh, taken over the line again. This time by Pickett. Mellington from the front. Hopgood taken out of it. Stevens trying to steal it. Well, he's a real little goer, Anthony Stevens. A terrier as he works at the ball. Now, if it sits here for Hewitt, he might be in business. Hand pass towards Pike, goes back to Hewitt, another one to King. Well, he missed the last one, David King, so he says he'll have another shot. And this time he does not miss. Doug, he has absolutely pumped that football. He absolutely kicked that, uh, Jared, probably 60 metres out post high. It was a great goal by David King, and that's the sort of run that we know David King, David King can get the North Melbourne side. Brilliant run and play by him. 20 points down, Dougie. Are you going to reassess your well, situation? I certainly am, Doug. Well, Jared, I said this uh, midway through the uh, second quarter. This game was over. Um, oh, a bit of a ball game here, I think, at this stage. <laughs> One of the great things about commentary, you are allowed to change. <laughs> well, the blue and white army is starting to chant here at the MCG. Figuring a revival. The next one, all important. Schwartz tries to get the hand pass away. The Shanahan is claimed, and he appeared to be held for a long time. Melbourne can answer. They go inside 50 at a fingertip mark. Is taken by Mickey Martin. Doug, I know you've got to play positive footy, as we said, but I just wonder for the next couple of minutes in this third term whether Neitz to send half back on Kerry might not work. That could be a fair idea uh, there, Gerald. I think it might be the right idea because at the moment the midfield scene is starting to tighten up a fair bit. And of course, and here we are, Swartz now may have gone back in that yeah, position yeah. instead of being Neitz. He has from half back. He goes towards Neat. Couldn't take it. North had Blakey waiting down. Tried to do the roving work. Chandler is there as well. But locked up. And a bounce on the outer wing. 20 points the margin. Just having a look at Swartz. I think he's just uh, pushed down there looking for a kick. He may well even be in the ruck at the moment. Chandler leaves it. Stevens, a hurried kick. Comes towards the centre of the ground. Mellington forced underneath. Now, he has to beat a couple here. And that's a big ask because Craig Smoker, he's having his birthday today and he'll want to celebrate with four points with Craig Smoker. 
finds David Neitz, who's caught by Chandler. Nick. Turnover and a tackle high, maybe. Yep. On Byron Pickett. <laughs> Rock is coming back out onto the ground for North Melbourne. In the meantime, Pickett's kick was, to say the least, interesting. They come back towards that way once again. And it finishes over the line in front of Chandler. Not sure what's happened with the matchup, but it just seems uh, coincidental that as soon as Jeff Farmer Doug has come off the ground, David King has and stepped up and he's now becoming damaging. He certainly has, uh, Jared. I totally agree with you there. Very important for Farmer to come back on the ground. He's doing a bit of a jog around the boundary now to get cramped in the forward pocket. Very, very unusual, that. Here he's a long way out. He's got a player on a lead. He uses that player and it's Shoal who marks directly in front, 45 from home. Yeah, just a lack of pace there, uh, Jared Lee, as you mentioned earlier with Jamie Shanahan. That certainly showed out there with Craig Scholl just showing a clean pair of heels there and took an easy mark out in front. Well clear of Jamie Shanahan that occasion, as we can see there. Yeah, pretty tough for all fullbacks that situation when the left foot kick was as accurate as that one from the King. Scholl directly in front, 47 metres from home. He has missed. Oh dear. Big miss that one. I thought for a moment the old fat lady had stopped singing, though. Well, yes, Andy, they're the ones that Craig Scholl normally does kick, and uh, that was a very, very important goal, particularly now with only a couple of minutes to go this third quarter. One behind there. David Swartz has run 120 metres to present himself this option. And Pike has spoiled it from behind. Barak tries to tap it further forward. Abraham tries to keep it in play. Yeah. And it is out of bounds. So a minute remaining in North's attacking zone. Three kicks in it. A goal here and they're set for the final term. Don't worry about that. McCartney from a standing start goes bang and misses. And uh, McCartney certainly still is playing on Swart. And uh, we're all trying to work out why Swartz is so far down the ground. McCartney's driving him down into the deep into North Melbourne forward line. So good play by McCartney for North Melbourne. Let's just have a look at the leap we were talking about with Mallington. Clearly, without any assistance, just jumped over the top of Jeff White. Uh, he is a genuine athlete. Go Woden towards Jeff White. Oh! So is he. Speaking of height, <laughs> there's frequent fire points, but no football oh. to go with it. Rock's poor hand pass puts Martin Pike under the pump. Travis Johnston has got to beat the veteran. Johnston, the youngster, goes. Pike goes again. He's still going. And eventually it's taken over the line. And I wonder if it was almost on the full off the boot of Craig Smoker as we have a look at that leap of Jeff White there. Yeah, that'll be a couple of thousand frequent flyers. Yes, and uh, David Swartz will know better than to get underneath Jeff White in future. Pike. Short kick and Schwartz is quite happy to see that over the line. So it looks as though there'll be three kicks in it going into the final quarter. Farmer's on the phone now to uh, Neil Danaher, expecting to be back on the ground the last quarter. Next step, Pike again. Now there's been a whistle. Shepherding. Illegal shepherding, was it? Yeah, well, that's what's been signaled by Steve yeah. Handley. I must admit, I, I didn't see it, but the Melbourne crowd certainly like it. That's uh, probably not an indication that it was right, though. White intercepted, but not paid to McCartney. He didn't hold it long enough, but which is why. Almost some holding on of the Guernsey there, but play is allowed to go on, and so it does. Smoker gets the hand pass wide. Leoncelli short of the siren. And I don't think Travis is going to get a kick. Stiff. But a correct decision, John. Yeah, I mean, the first sound of the siren indicates the end of the quarter, and in that case, the umpire heard it as soon as it sounded for the first time. So, uh, unfortunately, no kick to Melbourne. Well, a big third quarter by North Melbourne. A seven-goal blast has seen them storm back into this game and maybe set it up as the Dougie could have a very red face. Well, I certainly said, Sandy, they can't get into this. But anyway, they're back. 14-8, plays 11-8. Three goals the margin as we go into this final quarter. Twilight football coming away on seven footies home ground. Hope you're enjoying it. First goal, absolutely vital. Hewitt couldn't get it out of the middle. Phoebe gives it away to Seacamp, and he blasts Melbourne down Jeffrey. to the forward line. Jeffrey Palmer is lurking, but he's not the only one. 
the youngster, hoping to celebrate his birthday today, Craig Smoker. Kicked a smoky. Well, he hit the pack at 100 miles oh. an hour. It, it uh, was unfortunate for Jeff Farmer. He got a poor bounce, but allowed Smoker to run onto it. But once again, Doug, they're struggling in the middle. The centre clearances are all Melbourne. There certainly is, uh, Jared, no doubt about that. And the main reason, I, I believe Jim Stein is probably nearly the best player on the ground. He's been outstanding. Here goes King. Enjoyed himself when he got some freedom in the third quarter. But North need goals. An attempted soccer off the ground was by Welch. He couldn't do it. Scholl will go around the body, trying to bend it back, but not far enough. And it wobbles over the line in the right forward pocket. Danger time, though, for Melbourne with the Roos deep in their scoring zone. There's Big Jim. Heading towards 250 games straight. Amazing performance. Schwartz over the line. They'll do it again. You can just feel it here at the moment, Jared. Wayne Kerry and Winston Abraham grabbing this game by the scruff of the neck. I just feel this. Just got this feeling that Kerry's a man again, which he's done so many times. Like getting off right back in front here. And Scott's gone on to Farmer. Kerry tries to do it from the back. Bell in trouble. Oh, he wanted to go back to Kerry and he was almost oh, there. Where was that going? Uh, over the line. Over the line. JR. Is that deliberate, Johnny? What do you think about that, oh, Johnny? You bikes are amazing. Look, he gained about six metres. We've got to give him the benefit of the doubt for that. Who'd the handball to, Johnny? <laughs> Who'd the handball that to? Uh, no. Right? Well, he didn't handball it to anybody, but as long as he gains <laughs> ground, it's okay. And you folks know that. Who's <laughs> A? Recovers, but then loses it. Hopgood is in trouble. He'll go again. Held it for almost an eternity. Phoebe is at the bottom of the pack. Both sides realising the absolute importance of the first goal in this final quarter. Doug, do you think it's drawing too long a bow to say next goal wins? Uh, not quite, Jared. I don't think we'd go down the track that far at this stage. You know, we talked about a three-goal difference with North Melbourne. Then again, on the other hand, uh, you know, if Melbourne do kick that next goal, they jump four goals clear, and it could be big arcs for North Melbourne. I just want to say Arch has been very good, particularly uh, after half-time on Nietzsche. He's done a super yep. job after that. Steins again. Over the head of Stevens. Schwartz runs into trouble, and it's poked over the line by Jim Steins. Byron Pickett's moved off farm and he's gone on to Craig Smoker. So Melbourne's just throwing a bit more pace into their forward line with the addition of Smoker to complement Farmer. Jim Stein's working very hard. Hopgood. Only as far as McCartney. He runs into Smoker who shovels it out. Scott also does the same thing for North Melbourne. Shannon Grant wants a clear run. Smoker is very quick. Bell's almost coat hanger. Gets the hand pass away to McCartney. Another one now towards Chandler. North go charging forward. Here's the chance they've waited for. Oh. Carey couldn't take it. No whistle. Waiting down is Uze. Gets a hurried low kick and finds Liam Chelly on half back. It looked like Carey ran into his own player. Then only he ran into Winston Abraham. If we can have a look at that maybe later on the, uh, the replay. That looked like Carey smashed straight into Abraham going for that mark. Uze and Blakey in picture. Anthony Rock again warming the bench. I've seen him come in from the side, Wayne Carey. Doug, spot on. Pickett. Inside 50 again goes North Melbourne. They're peppering that zone, but failing to score. The Melbourne defence standing strong. Steins and Hewitt. Mellington from the back. Chandler trying to force it down. Well, Phoebe was taken high. He's at the bottom of the pack. Goes straight on with the job. Out comes the hand pass. Finishes with Steins. He in turn chips to Hopgood. How far did that one go? Five uh, metres. It was like a sandwich, wasn't it? Supposed to have gone ten, but we'd have to argue about that. And we haven't got time. <laughs> I think, Jared Healy, your question before about the next goal could win the game. The longer this quarter goes, your idea might be spot on. Well, certainly if you think if Melbourne get it, I think that there's no doubt that they're going to win this game. But uh, there'd obviously be a question mark against North Melbourne. But they just look as if they're ready to fire. They've got to crack the, crack the wall that Melbourne's put up. Well, here's the opportunity, Carey. Now, there's no one at home. 
You're going to let a talk go. But no, he goes back with a drop punt. Dropping it into the pocket and the mark is taken by Winston. Well, that's a set play, no doubt. Uh, we've seen that move twice today, haven't we? Carey yeah. take the big mark. Abraham come from right up the forward line and straight down the forward line. And he's taken a one-out mark. And he'll be shooting now for his third goal. So a fair contribution from any forward pocket. Yeah, no doubt, Jared. These are the two players that we mentioned before can get North Melbourne certainly right back in the game. Kerry and Abraham. 20 metres out. Almost directly in front. He shoots and he goals for North Melbourne. Winston gets his third. All in the second half of this match. And we have got a big final quarter, boys, on our hands. We have, and Melbourne's destiny for this year, I think is in their own hands they're staring their destiny right in the eyeballs at the present time if they go down here today it will rob the, the club of so much momentum it'll be tough to come back off the map cal has come off the ground he has been replaced by number 23 mcdonald 13 points the margin here at the mcg twilight time it certainly is north the steaming in the second half they are out played and outgunned in the first but they never say die here they go out of the middle once again bell round the body swings it to half forward carries the target ingerson is right there with him abraham's got hopgood it spills free north go charging it down towards shanahan who defends now there's a nest of bruise here carries on all fours he almost shoveled it out intercepted by seacamp time to steady to hopgood he finds a little bit of space only as far as mellington ducked his head got it away to peter bell looks for the hand pass north are charging here picket is clear a long way from home it's a high floating kick a big pack of players waiting down is the king <laughs> Back comes north. <laughs> how good is this that is like a rover jerry healy roving the pack this man is about six four six five He's had a fair bit of footy too, Wayne Kerry. But that was just brilliantly rode by the big fellow and the great captain where he just stood down, let the whole pack go for the mark, and he just rode the pack and just screwed it over his shoulder. Super play by Kerry. Nine in possessions, eight marks and three goals. If, we, if Wayne Kerry can conjure up one or two more, they're home North Melbourne. Great snap. So out of the centre, it's all important now. 14-9 plays, 13-8. Melbourne need an answer. They need a steadier. Lion overruns it. Here's Anthony Rock. He's had a bit of a dirty old day. Swings it into the middle, and that's OK. Finds Peter Bell. Play on. Should be the call, because he was away. Tried to get the hand pass. Now goes for the kick. And a big fly by Mellington. No mark is taken. Shannon Grant goes for home. This is another long ball. Oh, 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 oh. What a goal by the 20-year-old. Long and low. One point the difference. That was just a brilliant kick by Young Grant. He's been a very good player for the North, North Melbourne side in that midfield. He's played centre most of the day. He's been outstanding. Where his other midfielders, even though Stephen has probably had 16 kicks, has been fairly quiet. Well, it was a brilliant driving left foot kick. And... He knows that that may well be the goal that gets him a chance. Well, Melbourne fans must be shaking their heads here because their team at one stage had a lead of more than 40 points. It is evaporated now to just one. Down towards Neats it goes, but Pickett is there for North Melbourne. A <laughs> little bit of fancy work from Pickett. A couple of ounces. North now, running home the better. Kick up towards a right half forward. Taken out of the arms. Still kept in play. Given away towards McDonald. He chips in towards the middle. And it's a steadying mark taken by Steins. There's no question Melbourne's season's on the line here. If they go down in these circumstances, they just uh, may well not get off the mat. Here's Archer heading for the boundary line. They were in a winning position midway through the second term last year in Fremantle. Last week in Fremantle. Perhaps they had an excuse in the uh, in the circumstances with the heat being uh, so draining on their midfield but right at the moment they've just got to find something and come up with a victory 41 points was the margin at half time joe incredible not over yet though 
and Cockatoo Collins couldn't take it. Dashing Mickey Martin says, I'm getting out of trouble here, and away he goes. Tumbling the punt towards centre wing. Wobbly old ball, Blakey leads in the race, gets the call at the back, and spins it towards the line. It is over on centre wing. Jim, it looks like Melbourne are going back to old habits. They're just chipping the ball away. With North Melbourne, you know, a typical game plan, just kicking the ball long and giving their forwards every opportunity to score goals. Jim, we might get you just to have a look at their bench too because they need some fresh legs. They need some runners in the middle of the ground. Evan Hewitt spikes it towards Scholl. He couldn't take it. Ragoni's hand pace straight up high and down. Tackle. Simpson, a high tackle call. High tackle to was Ragoni. by Johnny Russo. And he looks like he's hurt himself. Either cramp or a knee. Looks like cramp. Yeah. Yeah, Rigoni unable to take his kick here, so uh, Phoebe will take it. Anyone on the bench, bench dipper that uh, could give Melbourne a lift? I know they've just put Donald Cockatoo Collins well, on the ground. Well, you've got Darren Cowell down there and also uh, young Travis Johnson. Of course, uh, Sean Smith won't be playing again and uh, also Andrew Lee and Chalice just getting some, uh, some uh, tight legs right at the moment. Doug, would you go with the kid, Travis Johnson? I don't think I would at this stage, uh, Jared. I just think Melbourne at this stage maybe lack that inexperience in tight situations, and they are in a tight one now. They're going to call on blokes like Schwartz, Nice, Lyons, the really, and Steins, of course, to lead from the front here. Ragoni off, Leon Celli comes onto the ground. Mellington was the high floater in front of the pack. Couldn't take it. Gergic's hand pass. His socket off the ground, but straight to Blakey. Well, North have got players streaming down ground. Blakey goes back. He takes his time. He heads towards Harford. He wants the King Carey. He's the flyer in the middle. Couldn't take it, but North have got the numbers waiting down. A little bit of indecision could prove oh. costly. In fact, it will because the mark is taken by Gary Lyon. Pushed as he takes the kick by Scholl. But down to Harford. That looks like Smoker. Kicks it to the man on the mark, but he's quick to recover. He's like Breeze Lightning Smoker. Goes for home, but pulls it across the face of goal. Right across the face and out of bounds. And a bit of nervous tension on both sides there. Doug, North Melbourne gave away a pretty poor possession. A couple of inexperienced players in the middle of the ground there uh, gave the ball up, but then yeah. Smoker also making a blow. Certainly was, but it's good to see him recover the ball too, Jared Young Smoker. This kid can play, so mm. some very good signs here today, quick. Young Smoker. Very quick, very, good, very ball, quick. good ball schools. Here's White and Martin. Rock. Up in the air towards Blakey. He marks on half back. Careful, Johnny Blakey. You're in real trouble. Looking to play on, but puts it down the throat of Jamie Shanahan. Well done. Shanahan gets through three or four, then kicks to half four. A big pack of players up. Neat slips at the crucial time. Cockatoo Collins shows dash. He loses one, oh, two. Oh. Gives it to Uze. A standing start from Adam Uze. He misses to the left. Frustration telling on many faces at the moment, including that of number five, David Schwartz. Well, back into play we come again through David King. McCartney a flyer from the side. Lyon take it out of it. It's stolen. Stolen again by Uzo. Round the body. Pike may leave this for his teammate. Archer. Oh, there's the escape. Here's danger course. now. And away goes Pickett. Oh. Poor kick. Very poor kick, and that's going to be turned over straight away to Jamie McDonald. Pickett could have ran another 10, 15 metres and kicked that ball to his North Melbourne teammate. That's a shock and kick, that. Towards White. Martin, a big fist, but straight towards David Neitz. That could be dangerous. Neitz from 40 metres shoots. It's going to be oh. tight. It's going to be very, very tight. He's kicked it. You want a team lifting goal? You want a steadier? Well, David Neitz has kicked his third, and they won't get much better than that. Well, it was a corker, wasn't it? Under pressure, tight angle. Players around him struggling with the pressure of the moment. Off one and a half steps, just absolutely brilliant. Follow the spinning football. That is a goal umpire's view. And it's amazing how the camera angle lies. Eight points, the margin. Interesting. Scott. Back to Hewitt. A high kick by Evan Hewitt. Almost down to half forward and Scholl. It'll swing onto the left foot. 
North Melbourne need a mark. Goes over the head of Carey. We know how he can take those running with a flight, but this time he's beaten by Ingerson. I tell you, Jared, it's very important when a player turns a football over. We saw Pickett there kick that ball to no one, mm. which really did result in Nietzsche's goal, I believe. Yep. Leoncelli's kick is wide. A sprawling David Schwartz can't get there to save it from going over. In fact, uh, just having a look at Byron Pickett, that's the one area of his game that's got to improve. Under pressure, he is uh, turning the ball over occasionally. He did it in the Ansett Cup a couple of times, but it's something that uh, all young footballers have got to come to terms with. Leoncelli almost threw it out in front. Here's McCartney. I'd agree with that, Sandy. I mean, he had the footy tackled. How did he get rid of it? He just let it go, holding the ball. Incorrect disposal. Right on centre wing. Still plenty of time for either side. Big game, this one. Twilight footy on seven. Farmer's kick. Touched. And we'll have a throw in. Yeah, pretty good smother there. And they're the little things that are going to count for plenty when the game is so tight. Just eight points of difference. A smother, a desperate lunge, just a bit of pressure, a bit of screaming, a bit of shouting. Anything can create an error which will, can uh, result in a goal. Seacamp, Mellington, Steins, and it's Steins who wobbles it down into the forward line. Jeff White is edged out, but here's Smoker. Phoebe, Phoebe, chips away at goal! Stephen Phoebe has kicked his first, and you couldn't ask for a better time to kick it. Just had the presence of mind to steady then, even though he was under a lot of pressure. Yeah. He was surrounded by... Just have a look at Byron Pickett. Sorry to come over the top there, uh, John, but he went for the footy, and his man was just uh, dangling behind him. He ended up with that all-important one possession that created that goal for Stephen Phoebe, who you say, as you correctly said, did it well. Gary Lyon now in the middle of the ground. He's just told his players just to calm down and continue in exactly what you've been doing. Well, I'm sure that Neil Danaher would be delighted the way they've steadied. Great tackle from the ex-captain. Here's Smoker. The hand pass to Jeffrey Farmer. He can seal it. This death Too far. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Jared, Sandy and Johnny, take away the scoreboard. Melbourne's been probably a five or six goal better side than North Melbourne here today at the MCG. And I'll tell you what, that, that is just, this is big stuff for the D's. I'm going to tell you what, Neil Denner, had he had some bite in this side, superb effort by Neil Denner on the Melbourne side. Count the steps, Dougie. I already went too far. I, was going to, I get the call over Sandy there. I said, he's gone too Nine, far this 10, summer. 10, 11, 12. 13. But has he Johnny or not? Oh, look, they're allowed to run 15 metres, but gee whiz, footy's a great game when you see stuff like that. I wouldn't want a man in white to stand in the way of it. That's Does football get any better than that passage no, of play? No, that's what we want. And we want <laughs> characters like him it's in the game. So here we go out of the middle once again. Melbourne are charging home after North challenge so strongly. Blakey drops it. He needs help when he gets it in the form of David King. Charges through the centre. Kicks towards half forward. Ingerson got a hand to it as opposed to Carey. Carey is the first to recover. Alley go on the left foot with a little chip in towards goal. He goes across the face. And out of bounds in the right forward pocket. Now we, the focus was on Farmer for that goal. But have a look at this. Smash, bang, crash. Down you go, uh, Jason McCartney. That is just an absolutely inspirational tackle. Spilt the ball free, and that's the little things we were talking about. Farmer bobs up with one of the goals of the year. Steins gets the hand pass out to Seacamp. Seacamp goes to the outer side, and he finds McDonald. So they're away, and Farmer is lurking on that outer side. Robert Scott has the job of trying to contain him. <laughs> 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 and that little laugh was compliments of Dougie Hawkins. Oh. He used to do it on a wing. Anthony Stevens chips into the forward zone. North need gold badly. They got to within one point. But then Melbourne, showing character, have steadied and steadied very strongly. Abraham in towards full forward. This time the mark is taken by Hewitt. And he should goal. Ten metres out to keep North in touch. They've got time, there's no question of that. Plenty of time, they just need a couple of good ones. Hewitt, kick the goal in the third quarter.
has another one now. Well, they've, got, they've got to rebuild some momentum, North Melbourne. You can cool. only do it by getting a goal, but after that goal, Doug, did you get the feeling that they uh, they think that they can win it themselves? I don't think so, uh, Jared. I didn't see many North Melbourne players go up to Young Hill and say, hey, son, well done. He was on his own after he kicked that goal, and that's a bad sign. In stark contrast, Doug, to Melbourne. Yeah, well, Melbourne, exactly right. They jump all over the place. Look out for G-line in the middle of the ground. 14 points the margin. And they go charging forward through Liam Shelley. Clever tap, but it may finish with Pickett. He's taken off it, and he's going to get a free kick. 20-year-old from Port Adelaide, Byron Pickett. Taken out of it by David Schwartz. So the ball is relayed back in towards the centre. Well, Woden gets a bad bounce, or he was almost taken out of it. North have the opportunity once again of going down towards Kerry. No one at home, so he decides to go for home. Oh. And goes across the face oh. of goal. He misses. Gee, that was a big opportunity, wasn't it? I reckon, Jared, he was going for the pass there. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he's having a shot for goal. No, I saw a teammate don't. in the goal square. Yeah. He just over... Uh... Over kicked the ball a bit too long. Yeah, spot on, Doug. He was going for the pass here for his uh, young... Young player Hewitt down there. Well, Wayne Kerry could have easily gone back there and kicked that 55, 60 metres, probably post high, as we've seen so many times in the past. Well, Woden is in the back pocket. This is where they need to kick long here. Well, they've got Jimmy Steins. He's hugging the boundary, and that's where they'll uh, be happy if this ball finishes. Steins got one hand to it. Uze got a couple, and he tumbled the punt. Now, watch Smoker go if he gets a sniff of it here. Archer is there at the moment, tries to take it out of his hands with a brief soccer. Pickett keeps it in play. Goes back again to the veteran wearing number 11. And he kicks it up towards the right half forward. No mark by Gary Lyon. Free kick paid for pushing the back, and there is absolutely no way in the world the umpire could have seen whether it was or whether it wasn't, and I don't think there was. That is an attempt to spoil by oh. Wayne Carey and oh. should not be a free kick. Spot on, Johnny Russo. Absolutely spot on, 100%. J.R. Oh, sorry, JR, <laughs> yes. The Ewing family. <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> to centre wing. Neats in from the side. Strong mark. <laughs> Players streaming down the ground as Neats decides to go long. Up towards White, Schwartz and Co. Oh, White got up high. But without the football. Peter Bell. Smokers at the bottom. Leon Shelley was there also. Archer kicks back towards half-back, only as far as Phoebe. Keeps it in play to Smoker again. Smoker gets the hand pass. Oh! oh. says I'll finish it now! <laughs> wow. It's yours, Doug. <laughs> the, rest the rest of us are speechless at a crack at it. We'll say it's a great goal, but the young kid Smoker could have kicked the ball blindly into the Melbourne forward line. But he just showed so much maturity there with that hand wall across to, uh, across to uh, Swartz. There it was just fantastic. Smoke a brilliant play, young fella. Yes, it was a tremendous play. But if that wasn't just the best goal we've seen for a long while, it was an absolute corker. What a performance by David Schwartz. Does he like the big stage? Oh, well, sensational stuff. Just over five minutes remaining, though. Shanahan defends, thumping it back over the middle towards David Neitz again. McCartney right there with him. Winston Abraham waiting down for the ruse. Kicks it wide to the outer side. But they want goals now badly. Carey is the man. He's down in that half forward zone, but he can't take the mark. Melbourne defence is standing strong. A sea camp in a spot of bother goes wide to Steins. Another one even further towards McDonald. They're streaming out of defence, long and low, in towards half forward, chopped off by McCartney. The boy originally from nil goes over the top and finds Hewitt. To half forward. Carey is his man, but Steins is in front. The great man playing game number 246. Who said his career was over? He's been absolutely brilliant here today, particularly with North Melbourne losing Capuano before the game. But if Melbourne were to lose this game, what an injustice would be. They've been the best side by a mile. Blakey's kick is wide, too wide, out on the full. 
19 points the margin. It's been a fair comeback, Doug, hasn't it? Uh, after being challenged by the side most people think are going to go on and win this premiership this year to uh, reverse the momentum that was coming at them and uh, come up with some of their own. It's just been a very good performance by Melbourne. It uh, certainly has, Jared. Here they go again. Ragoni takes it from Schwartz. Go Ragoni! He runs a long way. He shoots towards goal. And there <laughs> is the final nail in the coffin. It's been the younger players, Jared Healy, really from Melbourne, who we expected you know, the other Nietzsche's and the Lions and these sort of guys to do the job. It's been these younger type players, you know, Uze, even though he's been around a little while now, uh, Rigoni, Smoker, I've been mean, just being brilliant, these younger players from Melbourne. Yeah, I think McDonald's also had some uh, good moments, uh, as have Paul Hopgood. He's been around a long while but in the middle, good. So back in the middle, Melbourne go charging forward again through Paul Hopgood, floating high in towards the pocket. The Lion is there, Jeff White is there, running rapidly out of room, but he keeps it in play as Abraham comes over the top. Farmer has a fresh air shot. Lion comes into assist, takes it over the line as Robert Scott keeps an eye on proceedings. Be a bounce, Sandy. Just kept in, was it? Well, uh, I think the field umpire was praying it'd go over the line, but unfortunately <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> Three and a half remaining. I know. 25 points the margin. No, we'll throw it in. Yep. Martin in front of White. It's a hurried kick only as far as Hopgood. If it bounces favourably, we can send Melbourne back in towards uh, half forward and Ragoni. Well, he's just coming off a goal. These kids, Jared Hilly, have been great for Melbourne. An exciting time for the Melbourne Footy Club at this stage. Rigoni, young Travis Johnson, and of course Craig Smoker. He's playing a bit above his time, young Smoker. He's got a lot of ability. He's a fellow that didn't get uh, an opportunity at the top level with the Eagles. He was part of their squad for a number of uh, a number of years. But you're right, Doug. Lots of good things to look forward to for uh, Melbourne supporters. And uh, they've plucked this kid from the bush. He's 23, so he's probably not uh, regarded as a kid. But he's a very good midfielder in the making. This comes from Myrtleford behind to add to the goal that he kicked a few moments ago. And let's hope that Gary Lyon stands up for Melbourne. When he last stood up for a full season, the club finished fourth. That was back in 1994, which I guess for Gary would seem a long, long time ago. And I think rightly so, he kicked 10 goals in that semi-final against the Bulldogs. Sorry to mention it, Dougie. That's all right, Sandy. Bring back the memories. <laughs> <laughs> Winston's in a spot of bother. Chandler also gets it away towards Bell. Tumbling a punt to half forward, but chopped off by Adam Uze. Wide towards centre wing. It's all red and blue. Phoebe has a look down the ground. But chipping in to take the mark is Simpson. Just on the defensive side of centre. Heads towards Uze again. No one home. And that could 50 almost be 50. I think. Yep. I mean... It's foolish. The mark is taken and you take him to the ground. You, you're running a very, very substantial risk of giving away the 50. The mark is taken. Abraham tackles, drags him to the ground. I mean, it, it's got to be a 50 metre penalty. And silly. Well, at half time, they led by 41 points. North Melbourne closed that gap to one point. But uh, now they're in danger of seeing it balloon out again as Winston saying, You're kidding. And uh, the man in white says, No, Winston. I'm not kidding. Uze. 13 kicks, five hand passes, but a long way from home. Into full forward. Big pack of players. Jeff Farmer was one of the flyers. Bell waits down. Stumbles a short kick towards the half back line. Needs a lightning hand pass. Is okay to Cal. Spent time on the bench, Darren Cal, but back now. Sea camp a little too slow. And we'll pay the price. 26 points the margin. Blakey takes the mark. Almost down to the middle of the ground. Carey and Ingerson. Carey, front spot. And uh, Ingerson, a wry smile. What are Carey's stats, Jared? Well, he's had 18 kicks, three handballs, 10 marks, make that 11 now. He's kicked three goals. He's, uh, he's had a pretty fair performance. 
in a day when he spent a fair bit of time in the back line early in the match. Kicking from just inside 50. And this a very big game this from Melbourne. Jared, as you said before, uh, the next three weeks they play Carlton, Port Adelaide over here. Then they play Sydney at the Sydney Cricket Ground. So this win, I suppose, be fair to say, is like getting eight points. Tell big you win what, from they keep going like this. Sydney, Melbourne will be a lockout. Yeah, the no SCG. doubt. Well, it's an exciting time, isn't it? After the club has been struggling for a number of years, picked up their fair share of wooden spoons in recent times. Now, just maybe they are back. I don't know what your roster says, Doug, but I'm going up to Brisbane next uh, Monday. <laughs> and guess what? I'm coming with you. I got that incorrect there for a change. <laughs> it is not Carlton. It is the Brisbane Lions. Thank you, Jared, for uh, correcting that one. Well, that'll be a beauty, too. Yeah, it will be. Easter Monday with Doug. It'll be sensational. <laughs> got a feeling I'm with you. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> OK, Martin Pike. Do we get Morton Bay bugs on Easter Monday? Well, don't tell Doug. <laughs> Here's Anthony Stevens, 60 metres out, heads for home, but Melbourne's got the tall timber there. And Jim Stein's cool as a cucumber. Says, it's all right, boys, we've got this one, our first win with Neil Danaher. Ooh, and what a win. Don't come any better. We've it's... almost won it twice, so he had the game won at halftime. It was lost about 20 minutes ago, and, uh, well, they've just dominated since they uh, regained the lead. Phoebe through the middle. So the seconds tick down. It's all over as far as North is concerned. McDonald spears it in towards full forward. Martin chops it off. Kicks back towards the centre once again. But listen to this Melbourne roar. Oh. A big win for Neil Danaher and his men here at the MCG. Well, they had the short break. They had uh, terrible conditions to play in last week, which uh, would have given them an excuse to lose if they had have accepted that uh, excuse. But clearly, Doug, you can see this is a different Melbourne side under Neil Danaher and one that is going to uh, take some beating. So there we are. Melbourne big winners. The Melbourne players absolutely elated. The mixture of uh, young and old there is Jamie Shanahan who crossed over from St Kilda. David Neitz, David Schwartz, and Gary Lyon. What a moment for him, Dougie. Yeah, fantastic for Gary Lyon, no doubt about that. Very important to have him back in the side too, Jared. Let me just rephrase that before. There's Sean Smith on the ground. 100 games today, and uh, well done to Sean Smith, who's travelled around a few clubs too in his time, but great to see that. Let me just rephrase this uh, again for you, Jared. You've got Brisbane, Carlton, Port Adelaide, and then they've got Sydney. So this is like at 12 points, matter of fact, not eight. You're dead right. And, uh, well, Gary Lyon thinks it's absolutely fantastic. Not only has he returned to the fold, he's returned as a winner. And that was one of the best tackles I've seen uh, for yeah. a long time in the middle of the ground that uh, spilled the football out. And, uh, well, Cameron Swab is also uh, doing his best yeah. to impersonate an orchestra leader. Jared, they're going to sing the song on the ground, which is uh, Very rare. a long time since I've seen that. That's a wonderful sight, isn't it? And a rare one, too. The Melbourne supporters giving their side a standing ovation as they now leave the arena. <laughs> oh, it's like a grand final. Good on it the is, Dees. It is. Fantastic. Fantastic victory to the Melbourne Footy Club. Just repeating the final score. Melbourne, 1911-125. North Melbourne, 1510-100.